Excuse me, would you happen to know the way to Hazel Wilde's farm? Tara? Oh my goodness, it really is you, isn't it? Lena? I haven't seen you since I was tiny. It's good to see you again. I heard you were coming to stay with your grandma, Hazel. Now, do you remember the way? <laughs> uh, no. I don't remember much from that time. No problem. Go up the stairs behind me and turn left at the top. Then just follow your nose till you get to Hazel's house. Go up the stairs behind you, then turn left and follow the path. Got it! Blasted, rusty old crank. Huh. I ought to blast you. <laughs> Not a bad idea, actually. My charm will bind, turn, and unwind. Ha 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 ha! Look at it go! Uh, Grandma? Oh, it's you! Oh, my little honeybee! <laughs> I'm not so little anymore, Grandma. No, I suppose not. There now, that should do it. They'll take a few days to grow, but it's a start. Oh, and I was thinking about cooking up some mushrooms. How would you like mushroom soup for dinner? Mm. Is it the same one you used to make when I was little? Because if it is, yes, please. <laughs> Lovely. You'll find plenty of mushrooms good for eating if you head up that mountain path a little. Wait, we have to pick the mushrooms ourselves? <laughs> no, this isn't the city, honeybee. Besides, freshly picked mushrooms taste better. Yeah, if they're not the kind that poison you. You'll do just fine. <laughs> I'll do my best. Is there anything else I can do for you? Well, if you wanted to get some new seeds in town, it might be a good time to stop by and see the mayor. Introduce yourself. He's at Town Hall, a big building in the center of town with a flag above the door. You can't miss it. I'll take good care of you and this farm, Grandma. I'm just so glad you're here, my sweet little honeybee. All right, here I am, farming. <laughs> This place has changed so much. It'll take a lot of work to get back to how I remember. I don't know if city life has prepared me for this, but I'm ready to give it my best. Oh, hello. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. I am Mayor Otto Soft, and you must be the new voter. I mean, neighbor. Uh, hi. Uh, yes, that's, that's me. If there is anything you need, I'm the one to speak to. We're a friendly town here at Fairhaven. We want to make sure you're settled in well. To that end, we want you to meet everyone, so we've made it a little game. The fine Fairhaven folk will let me know after they've met you. That way, I can give you a prize after you've met everyone. It's really quite clever and progressive. <laughs> Plus a little bit creepy. <laughs> you're funny. Anyway, come and see me after you've met everyone. There you are. Oh, and Tara too. Wonderful. Tara, I can't wait to buy your fresh crops. And if you need seeds, I can sell you whatever's in season. Oh, Parker, we need to talk about the kids. They were giggling over breakfast, so I searched Finn's backpack and found a whoopee cushion in there. Again! <laughs> I, I mean, that's, that's terrible. Uh, see? That's the problem right there. You think it's funny, and I have to be mommy cop. No, I'm taking this seriously, really. Okay, whatever. You can be the one to go to the next parent-teacher conference. I'm tired of getting stared down by Vanessa. Hey, how's it going? I'm Damon. You're Hazel's granddaughter, yeah? 
How did you guess? You got the same eyes. They say, I'm beautiful, but I don't suffer fools. I'll take that as a <laughs> I run the bar. Stop by for good vibes and a sympathetic ear any old time. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. Oh, hey, Bruno. Damon, I want to settle up for last night. Sorry I didn't have it on me at the time. <laughs> That's all right. I knew you were good for it, but, uh, <laughs> thanks. Fish just haven't been biting lately, but I got Otto to float me for a week. I wish you hadn't told me that. Your son already has it out for me, Bruno. That's not so. He's just a teetotaler, is all. And who's your new friend here? Guten Tag. You're Hazel's granddaughter, aren't you? Yes. Are you German? And also psychic? <laughs> I'm Bruno. Don't actually speak much of my native tongue, but I try to keep up some traditions. And you're just a picture of your grandma when she was a girl. I am? Yeah! She was a real spitfire back then, too. Hasn't changed much. I see you met Damon. Tara, watch out for this boy. He's trouble. Hey, I'm trying to make a good first impression here. Do you mind? Are your allergies acting up? Oh, no, it's all the dust in the front room. <laughs> but sweeping makes my back ache, so I've turned a blind eye for... <sighs> no months now. But that's exactly what I'm here to help with, Grandma! Then would you mind showing those dust bunnies the front door? There's a broom in my room you can use. You wait out here. Those dust bunnies have no idea what's coming for them. I'll have to move this rug to make real headway. Whoa! Is that an actual trapdoor? Jeez, Grandma! What are you keeping down there? So, the trapdoor under the rug... Hmm? What is it for? Preserves and pickles? Or old machinery? It's not important, honeybee. Will you be out and about tonight? Probably, but I... Could you fetch me some moonflower? It only blooms after sunset. You'll know it by the white blossoms. See, my moonflower tea blend makes me feel so healthy. I get a blush on these old cheeks. Go right past Parker's workshop into the woods and you'll find what you need. I feel like I'm getting redirected here. I, at my age, it's awfully hard to hear certain things. Did you... Put the rug back in place. Yes, Grandma, but... Uh, but are you brewing moonshine down there? You can tell me if you're brewing moonshine. Mm, I can already taste that tea. That was normal. Uh, hello? Who's there? I probably shouldn't spy on strange people creepily creeping through the woods at night. Come along, Elder Hazel. Don't rush me, I'm coming. Grandma? Where did she go? She shouldn't be out here at night. Elder Hazel, this is the third time you've come to the circle without your robe and mask. 
This is an unacceptable risk. Bah! It's time for us to come out of hiding. The town won't be afraid of witches if they know that we're their neighbors. People seem nice. Until the day comes when they need a scapegoat for their troubles. Then, people become mobs. Well, I didn't bring Terra here so she could skulk around like she's doing something wrong just by being who she is. So you think your intuition was right, then? She has the gift? When will she be ready to join us? Join them? You hear something? Uh-oh. Okay, I definitely have more questions than answers now. Uh, is that a cauldron? Not just any cauldron, your cauldron. What? Oh, no, I'm not a... Witch? Oh, my dear, yes, you are. No layperson could make a brew like that on her first try. I feel as spry as I did 50 years ago. This basement is your sanctum. You have your cauldron, of course. Wait, wait. is Dad a witch? Or, 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 or warlock? Or... Arthur? Oh, no. Oh, no, honeybee. He's more... conventional. I'm afraid. But I saw that spark of magic in your eyes the first time I held you. I've always known you would be an extraordinary witch. But the Coven needs proof before they'll accept you. Coven? Well, those folks in the woods, of course. They put a charm on the Bramble Wall, so you'll need a wand to open it. This is, uh... Kind of a lot to learn all at once. I understand, honeybee. When you're ready, read this incantation before the special silver willow in the woods. Then you'll have a branch to make your first one. Uh, let's see. The inscription says, If I be worthy, ancient tree, give a silver branch to me. Please? Wow! I, I mean, uh, uh, thanks, magic tree! Okay. The brambles only allow friends of the coven through, so this incantation helps it to identify you. Once it meets you, it'll know you're a friend and let you through from now on. Say the spell when you're ready. Friend of the Coven comes to you. Unravel your brambles and let me through. Oh, it worked! Well done. Now, let's head on up. Grandma, what is this place? Who are these people? Shh, shh, shh. You've got to be properly introduced. Who approaches the sacred circle? I bring one who wishes to know the mysteries of this coven. Um, hi. Welcome, Initiate. Elder Hazel has told us so much about you. I am the High Priestess of this coven. Before you can join us, you must vow to never reveal the location of our circle or the details of our rights to any others. Do you promise to abide by our covenants? Sure. Um, I promise. I'm so excited that I'm a witch. This is going to be so much fun. Uh, uh, about that, honeybee. You're not a witch. Not yet. First, you must cast the initiation rite. Oh, okay. Um, but how do I, how do I do that? Speak to the Farseer over yonder. He will explain the art of incantations. Are you the Farseer? What? Yes, yes, Farseer, that's me. No, I'm nearsighted, Farseer. <laughs> you know, you sound a little bit like... You've no idea who I am? I'm wearing a mask. Listen, do you want to sit here playing guessing games? Or do you want to learn more magic? Magic! Great. I'm gonna teach you the art of incantations. Mm, tricky stuff. 
mess it up, and there won't be much left of you beyond dust. That sounds a bit dangerous to start with. Only to fool initiates that don't follow instructions. Now, listen closely. Are you ready? I'm ready. Great. I need you to chop lots of wood. What? Turn it into paper. Right. You'll need a paper press. Put it in your tool shed. How will this help me with incantations? All will be revealed. <laughs> One of us is clearly crazy. I'm beginning to think it's me for listening to you. Oh, good. You're up. The mayor's called a town meeting this morning. We should get down there and see what he's making a fuss about this time. Do you think it's some kind of trouble? Ah, uh, I really hope not, but I guess we'll see. Lead the way, Grandma. Follow me. Settle down, everyone. Settle down. I've brought you together to discuss a very important matter. There have been very strange goings on in our beloved town of Fairhaven. There is a force at work in our community, and I don't know who's responsible, but whoever they are, they don't have Fairhaven's best interests at heart. Oh, I don't like where this is going. Me neither. I've seen strange lights in the forest at night. Yeah, and folks in robes and masks wandering around after sunset. Yes! Yes, good. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Wait, I'm sure there's a rational explanation for all this. No matter the cause, we must ensure our town doesn't become a home for rouseabouts and unsavory types. I ask all of you to keep a sharp eye out for signs of mischief. And if you see anything, report it to me. Or me, if you prefer. I'd hate for anyone in Fairhaven to feel fearful. Well, I never! Mayor Otto, soft on business. <sighs> soft in the head is more like it. Him and his fancy britches wife standing up there and casting judgment on others. Uh-oh. You're even madder than I thought. He can't just tell people to spy on their neighbors, to be so afraid that they distrust everyone around them. Maybe we could cast a goodwill spell to make everyone be nice to each other? I wish it were that simple. But just because you can solve a problem with magic doesn't mean you should. Thomas could use some help on his farm. I know he's got an order of beans due, and he doesn't have enough plots going to make it in time. He's too proud to ask for help, though. <laughs> Here, take these seeds. They should be enough to make the order. Are these magic beans? <laughs> oh, heavens no. <laughs> but if you've got the means to give him a boost, it certainly wouldn't hurt. You know, I don't think I've been in here since your grandpa died. Sorry, I was just looking around like you said. I didn't mean to pry. No, no, it's fine. I just wasn't as good with my hands as he was. He gave most of his tools to Thomas, since I knew he'd put them to good use. You know, if we want to get this place up and running, though, we'll need to put in the work here, too. We always made a whole lot more money from his crafts than just the farm produce alone. If you ever want to try your hand at it, I kept the blueprints to all his tools right here. Thanks, Grandma. Not sure if I'm a handy Tara, but I'll try for us. Don't pack the soil too tight now. You'll choke the seedlings. Oh, hello, Thomas. I didn't hear you. That's because I don't wear big, clumpy boots like you city folk. Anyway... <clears throat> Not a bad effort for your first plot. Wow, you give compliments? Don't make me regret bringing these for you. <laughs> Thank you. But what's the occasion? Hazel's a good woman. Strong. But you don't need me to tell you she's struggling. So when I saw you out helping with the garden beds, well, she's not the only one who appreciates it. I'll do my best with these seeds. You did a great job casting your incantation to get your wand branch. But actually writing incantations can be a touch trickier. Yes, I gathered that I have a lot to gather. It's not just that. When you write your incantation, you'll need to draw magic from the wellspring. 
to charge it with power. Draw what from where? Didn't you notice the great big cauldron right by the circle? Yeah, but I just figured it was for extra big batches of potions. Oh no. No, no, the coven cauldron is where we leave offerings for the wellspring. The source of all magic here on the island. Our task as a coven is to maintain the wellspring. We cannot draw more energy from it than we put in. I wrote the incantation you read before the Elder Tree, drawing from my magic reserves. But to craft your initiation incantation, you'll need your own. Go on and offer something to the wellspring. Over time, you will learn that it likes some offerings more than others. Try different things and see what happens. Oh, hey there, kitty. Do you belong to my grandma? Yeah. Oh, you're a good kitty. Grandma, you didn't tell me you have a cat. A cat? <laughs> the last cat I had was old Shadow, rest his soul. He wasn't much to look at, but he was a darn good mouser. This cat isn't yours? <laughs> she seems awfully familiar with your garden. <laughs> oh no, I don't own that cat. What a notion. She's a good friend to have around, though, so play nice. <sighs> Here's the initiation incantation, Grandma. Honeybee, before we get started, I have a gift for you. This has been in our family for generations, and it is our custom to pass it on at the time of initiation. Go ahead, try them on. Oh... Like all before you, they fit you beautifully. Oh, I feel... taller. <laughs> yeah. That was done during my Aunt Vivian's time. She was a bit on the short side and wanted to appear more regal. So she spelled the robes. Then the other witches got jealous and we might be magical, but we're still human. Elder Hazel. Initiate Terra. Take your places for the right. Initiate. You seek new knowledge, but with it comes a sacred duty. Who brings forth this initiate to join our coven? I do. As the great wheel turns, so must we take our part. Here where our ancestors stood before us, and where others will follow. Enter our circle. For this is the hour. A fair haven witch comes into her power. Oh, I feel... weird? But... but in a good way. You are ready. Return tomorrow and we will continue your training. Hi, Thomas. I've got some green beans for you. Grandma said you needed them to make an order. Oh, she did? Huh. Well, thank you. That will be a help. Stay there a moment. I got something for you. Uh, hello? Who are you? What's it? You can see me? Well, yeah, you're standing right there. Oh, it's just... M most humans don't take much notice of me. My family and Thomas's family got a long history. I like to help out where I can. I do too, I guess. Well, you must be a good witch then. <laughs> Wait, how did you know I was... Where did she go? Where did who go? Um, the cat. You know, the, the stray? Right. Well, here's something for helping me out. It's not much, but it's what I have. Thanks, Thomas. Stay a moment, honeybee. How are you finding the town now that you've met everyone? I know we're a bit different than the folks you might have known back in the city. That's a good thing, actually. I needed to say goodbye to all of that. For now, at least. You 
haven't said much about your fiancé. Do you want to talk about what happened with... I'm sorry, I have such a bad memory for names these days. Matt, there really isn't much to say. I woke up one day with a note next to my pillow saying that we were over. We haven't spoken since. <laughs> what a coward. Grandma. I'm sorry, but it's true. My view is too many folks take the easy way out these days. You deserved better than that, Tara. Thank you, Grandma. On this island, when folks want to break up, they'll tell you to your face. It's a bit of a convoluted tradition, actually, but... Well, we're putting the cart before the horse, aren't we? And maybe it's time for you to get back on the horse. Anyone caught your eye yet? I'm not sure I'm ready to date again, Grandma. Come now. You can't spend all your time doing farm chores. You've gotta live a little. Really? I'm happy just to make new friends. For now. Fine, fine, suit yourself. But if you really want to make new friends, a little generosity never hurts. Here, take this and give it to Thomas. You'll see what I mean. Ah, I see you found the barn. This is it? I went looking for it, but I, I wasn't sure. Remember the time I milked Bessie and she kicked over the milk bucket? I hid in the barn because I thought you would be mad. <laughs> no use crying over spilled milk. Or a barn that got blown down in a storm, I suppose. I had to give up keeping cattle. So does that mean this is... Yeah, the chicken coop. Well, after Merlin passed, I didn't have a dog to guard the chickens, and they kept getting picked off. I chopped up the coop for firewood. Oh, that's a shame. Do you think we could restore them? Well, I'm sure we could, but after that old ranch closed up, the nearest place to get more animals is miles away. If Mayor Otto would bestir himself to do something about that, then... Fixing up these buildings would be light work for Parker. Oh, hey there. Are you ready to help your neighbors reach the pinnacle? Uh, pinnacle of what? <laughs> You're funny. Everyone knows about the pinnacle. The climb to the pinnacle is the very foundation of the League of the Conscious Mind. This community is ready for some new ideas, but I'm running out of pamphlets. If you could find me some paper, I'll make sure you are rewarded. Monetarily or... Spiritually. Both. So, you've decided to climb the pinnacle too? What? No, Cameron just asked for some paper. I heard. For printing pamphlets, which will help spread his ideas. Don't get me wrong. Cameron's a nice guy, but I don't trust the League. And it's strange to see Angus get caught up in this. I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking about it like that. I figured. It's easier to act like everyone on the island has good intentions, right? Hey, I'll pay you for that paper too. I could always use more wrapping paper for the store. I did promise Cameron. I know, I know. Just think about it. Yoo-hoo! Parker stopped by on his way out to let me know the mine was finished. Let's go check it out. Oh, oh, oh it's looking great. Do you know what that means? I need builder's insurance. <laughs> Silly. You can go mining. Yeah, it was, uh, it was kind of implied. <laughs> Here, you'll need this to get started. A pickaxe is a handy tool to have around. You can break up rocks to gather some stone and also mine lots of lovely ore now that this place is fixed up. Now take it in and get cracking. But it's dark and and there's probably bugs. You'll want to focus on cracking open the mineral rocks to find ore. Bring me back some iron ore and I can turn it into iron for you. 
Oh, before I forget, you'll need to keep your eyes peeled for the keys to get further into the mine. Some clever fellow has scattered them about. They're probably buried under fallen rocks by now, but there's lots of great stuff in the mine, so it's worth it. Have fun exploring. Oh, I'm sure I will. Yay. I place a monthly order for fresh flowers, Violet. It, it's not like I asked for a rush job. I'm sorry. It's just that the fairy's running behind schedule. Again. Maybe if the fairy wasn't underfunded, this wouldn't happen. Make excuses if you like. Late is late, as I tell my students. Bad time? Ugh, no. It's fine. I just... When my dad was mayor, the fairy always ran on time. Hey, do you have any wildflowers growing on your farm? Maybe I could make some substitutions. Uh, sort of? How do you feel about thistles? You're suggesting I make a bouquet out of thistles? Thistles? Oh, look, if you don't want them, did you hear me say no? The sooner I can get Vanessa out of my hair, the better. Tara Wild, to what do I owe the pleasure? I'm here to pick up some medication. Uh, for my grandmother? Ah, uh, yes. Here it is. It's very sweet of you to run Hazel's errands. Her mobility has decreased markedly this year. But lest you think I only treat Hazel, I want you to know I can help you too. I'm not sick. I mean, I don't, I don't think I am. Do I look sick? No, no. You're adjusting to a new job with much more manual labor. Each night that you don't go to bed on time, you lower your immune system's capabilities. Working outdoors in the rain and cold can have the same effect. Eventually, you'll leave yourself open to colds and viruses. And when you come down with something, your energy levels plummet. If that happens, come see me for a restorative. Otherwise, you might pass out. Oh gosh, I would never live that down. Sometimes I have a difficult time sourcing all the ingredients. So you may see requests on the town notice board. Please fulfill them if you can. Seeing patients takes up most of my time. I'll do my best. And so we begin the turning of the seasons, just as our ancestors have done for thousands of years. Novice, pour the spirit flame into the fire. We say goodbye to the gentle sun of spring. We welcome the golden dawn of summer. Um, yes, we turn the seasons, like they said. Honeybee, you're here. Of course I am, Grandma. For a moment, I thought you were Robert coming to collect me. I, I felt a warm breeze. Yes, we turn the seasons. That's all. <laughs> still a skeptic, I see. But there is still so much you haven't seen. Still so much to learn and do. Oh, I've done my best to take care of Violet since her mother disappeared. Don't worry. I promise I'll be here for her. I know you will, sweetheart. You're going to do great. I'm proud of you. I'm so glad you came back to see me. <sighs> me too. I just wish we had more time. We had <laughs> time enough. We've learned how to run the farm. I'll take good care of it for you. And I know you can bring the community and the coven together. Promise me? You'll remember everything I've taught you? I promise. You will be a marvelous witch. I can already see your powers 
blooming. Oh, it's time for me to rest. Take care, my beautiful little honeybee. I love you. <laughs> Goodbye, Grandma Hazel. I'll take up your mantle and protect the town. You can rest now. Today, we say goodbye to one of this town's finest citizens, Hazel Wild. Her dear friend Lena is going to say a few words. Hazel was my mentor. Yes, but she was more than that. She was always giving. Advice, a bowl of soup, a basket of fresh eggs. She never, ever gave up on those she loved. And she loved this island more than anything. And now she's given us Tara. Oh, we are so glad you're here. It means Hazel hasn't really left us. Thanks, Lena. Hello. You're Hazel's granddaughter? I'm Wesley. I've never seen you around before. Oh, I don't live in Fairhaven. Oh, I see. So you came over on the ferry from Milkwater. Well, thanks for taking the time to come all that way. Um, of course. I wanted to come pay my respects. Hazel was a wonderful friend. Oh, um, and I uh, have this for you. I run a rare bookshop, you see. Hazel had me fix the binding on this old family heirloom. I know she would have wanted you to have it. Oh. Th th thank you so much. Well, I should go. Nice to meet you, Tara. Nice to meet you, too. Wait. That's not the way to the ferry. <sighs> Finally, a moment to myself. Now I can look at that book that, um, that man... Wesley gave me? Huh. Looks like a journal. Grandma's journal. <sighs> this is her handwriting. On the front flap it says, To my dear niece, to record thoughts both mundane and magical. Vivian. Vivian was Grandma's aunt. She must have been a witch too. Here's the first entry. Today's chores took me through the portal, where I spoke at length with the fairies. Did she write fairies? Maybe I'm misreading the writing. Or maybe there's even more to discover on this island than I realized. I'm getting the sense that Fairhaven's festival isn't just about the solstice. Is there a story behind it? Oh yes, there certainly is. Here, let's step outside and I'll explain. This is a statue of my ancestors, Peggy and Molly. They lived here during colonial times. Whoa. I knew your family had been here for a while, but I didn't realize just how long. One summer during the Revolutionary War, the British Navy demanded all of the town's stores. So the people of Fairhaven loaded all of their crops and livestock into a storeroom ready for transport. The next morning, the soldiers opened the doors and saw an empty storeroom. So they had to sail away empty handed. Then Peggy and Molly led the mayor of Fairhaven to the lighthouse. And there it all was. The girls swore up and down that they'd prayed on it and a miracle had happened. To this day, we still don't know how they pulled it off. But we celebrate it, even if we don't understand. And here I thought this was just a statue. <laughs> oh no. It's rare that the things around us are just anything. Tara! 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 Did something happen? We want to build a lemonade stand. That's what happened. Mommy said she would help us with the lemons, and Daddy said he would help us build the stand. But we still need the wood for the stand. And some sugar. <laughs> it's hard to say no to that. Plus, if you help us, we'll give you a lemonade discount. So you'll be like an investor. You can see long-term returns. Emmy's been reading a book that Daddy bought. He said it was boring. But Emmy doesn't think it's boring. What kind of long-term returns are we talking here? Uh, I don't know. I haven't gotten to that chapter yet. Well, let me see what I can do. Whee! Endless lemonade! 
This is the blacksmith run by Natalia. Wait, like an actual village blacksmith? Oh, how quaint! I wonder if she could make me copper wiring for a new antenna. And here we are! The town hall. Oh, you must be Giva! I'm Mayor Otto Soft. Thanks for bringing her by, Tara. We have a little game we play with all new arrivals in Fairhaven. Introduce yourself to all your neighbors, and they'll let me know when you've met everyone. <laughs> You're a riot. Actually, hey, serious. Oh, wait. Really? Yes! And you'll get a prize to help you get settled. Oh, you've already met Tara. So that's one down. Um, okay, why not? Should be good for a laugh, right? This island may be stranger than I thought. Uh, what was that? Oh, nothing. Your grand wasn't a fan of our masks, but rules are rules. You've got to earn our trust before we can reveal who we really are. Unless you think you can guess my name. Rumpelstiltskin. Ah, don't be calling the Fae folk unless you mean it now. You're to complete a test. Each member of the coven will ask you for a magical item. You're to bring it to them. Sounds easy enough. During the day, in town, if you give it to the right person, we'll say so. What? But what if I give it to the wrong person? <laughs> Won't Cameron freak out if I give him some magic doodad? Don't worry. Civilians can't read incantations. It just looks like a blank piece of paper to him. I'm to set you the first task. It has to do with time. Oh, time travel? How far back can I go? You're not ready for that yet, novice, but you can try pausing time for a moment to give you long enough to finish what you've got to do. It will only work while you're in the place you read the spell. Once you leave that space, time will resume its course. Here's what you need to write the spell. Come to me during the day when you've finished it. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad you could all be here. There's one thing I want to say before the party really gets started. Every year, the captain of the Summer Festival crowns a Summertide star. The star is someone we want to feel special and appreciated. So, this year, I wanted to crown someone who's only been with us a few months, but has already been through so much on Fairhaven. Tara, you will always be welcome here. And I'm making you the Summertide Star so you'll never forget. Oh, Sophia, that's so sweet. Even though Hazel's passed, we're all still here for you. Let's get a round of applause for Tara Wild, our Summertide Star. Now, go on! Take your seat and enjoy yourself. Time to light this thing. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you, Sophia. Gosh, what a blaze. That's very on fire. <laughs> Is a bonfire supposed to be that big and, um... Fiery? In any case, I'm so proud of this community for coming together for yet another wonderful summer festival. Ah, it's hard to follow in Mrs. Soft's shoes. What? What? Did, did I fall and it hit my head? Ah! A human! Hold on. Terra Wild? Is that you? Yes. Uh, but, but who are you? You're familiar, but I can't. Oh, buckles and buttons! It sure is, Tara! 
Ariel, if this is a prank, I'm going to blast you. You think I did this? <laughs> I like a good joke, but I know the rules. Which? What have you done? I didn't do this, I swear. Sophia just named me the Summer Tide Star, and I ended up here. No, we haven't called a Summer Tide Star here for generations. The townspeople forgot us long ago. Teleportation magic is advanced. It's not something a new witch could know. But if she didn't send herself here, then who? Again! What? Who are those people? Were they even people? Whew. I don't think anybody saw. Otto is still talking. Did time even pass here? And I would like to say one more thing. Fairhaven is a great town, and we must preserve it for future generations. And that is why I am announcing the founding of the Fairhaven Culture Committee. The Fairhaven Culture Committee will preserve our history and champion our unique culture and values. Whose history? Whose culture? Well, I've run my mouth long enough. May the rest of the summer be bounteous, friends. I'd better go see if the Coven knows anything about whatever just happened. Now the sun begins to wane. We celebrate nature's gifts and ready ourselves for the harvest. Farseer, you know the Fey folk you keep mentioning? I think they teleported me to their magical village in the middle of the summer festival. I told you to pay your respects, didn't I? One of them was short, with pink hair, and another one was covered in fur. The third had, I can't believe I'm saying this, backwards feet. What was that place? <laughs> On some nights, the walls between the worlds become thin. There's more than one world? Be able to journey back there the same way again. Well, how can I get back there? My boat would be the proper way. But I don't have a boat. Of course you do. In the lake by your farm. It was Hazel's and bonded to her Aunt Vivian before her. Always been there. You just didn't have... Huh. When did I get here? Eyes to see. Maybe when I visited that strange place... The veil hiding this pot was lifted. Yeesh. Is she even seaworthy? I better fix it up before trying to sail anywhere. She cleaned up nice. Oh, but now what? I could get in and try floating in the lake in circles. But I think the Farseer will know what I need next. Hi, Thomas. Enjoying town? Had business. Only reason to come to town. You going towards the woods? You ought to be careful. I spent a lot of time in those woods when I was a kid. I know them well. But it's easy to lose your way. There are others in those woods at night, and I don't know what their intentions are. Thomas, I appreciate the warning. But how do you know the people in the woods at night are even trying to cause trouble? If they're not up to anything, then why wear masks? A logging operation tried moving to the island once, but Lena's dad and my dad organized the town folks to fight them off. Now those woods ought to be left in peace, in honor of my dad and hers too. Not that he remembers much these days. I'll be careful. That's all I ask. Here goes nothing. Tara, you've returned. I knew you could do it. And I knew I'd seen you somewhere before. I live in milk water my foot. It's the wild boat. Huh. And look, the wildling. Ah, Tara. Do you have the customary charm? Oh, ah, uh, here it is. 
So what does this do, anyway? Oh, if you break the charm, it reveals your location. A <laughs> fascinating little gadget. And if you ever endanger our secrecy here, we will know exactly where to find you. But where am I exactly? Oh, where are our manners? Yes, you're in Ravenwood Hollow, our hidden little home. You already know me as a human, but under the moon I take a slightly more wolfish form. You may call me Perry. I'm a fairy, and I run the apothecary. <laughs> what? It's not even that funny. We've met, of course. <laughs> oh, but not formally. I'm Zephyr of the Grimspark Goblins. I'm Ariel. I would like you more if you were scaly or furry or had wings, but you'll do. Wow. I've never seen this place on a map of Fairhaven. Technically, we're not in Fairhaven. This place exists between a point in the human world, that's Fairhaven, and a point in the Fey world, the gloaming. Don't tell me. Another place everyone failed to mention. Come speak with me later. There are things about the Fey world you must know. So you are the Fey? Yes, and we don't let many into our home. Not even all witches. But you brought me here during the summer festival. Actually, we haven't been able to untie that particular knot. What Zephyr means is none of us brought you here. We still don't know how it happened. Great. Love that there's a unsolved mystery centering around me, being flung through space-time. Ooh, <laughs> spicy! Just like your grandmother. Now that you've been formally received into Ravenwood Hollow, you can come and go as you like. Just remember, never reveal our existence to anyone. Morning, Tara! Any chance your grandma may have passed down any folk remedies for ailing cattle? No, why? Is one of your cows sick? Well, that's the thing, I just don't know. She's not producing milk, but Dr. Syed checked and said she doesn't seem to have an infection. I may have forgotten to feed her once, or twice. The animals get sick if you forget to feed them? Apparently! And I can't get a vet to come in from off-island for at least another week or so. I just wish someone in Fairhaven really knew animals. Let me know if you think of anything. I may know someone. Ariel, do you know any remedies to cure sick animals? Hmm, I might. Who's it for? A pequeño woodland creature? No, a farm animal. Ah. Perhaps freedom will cure what ails her? But the magnificent bovine does not deserve to suffer due to her owner's neglect. Gather some coconuts from the beach. Make this potion. That should set her right. Oh, and you'll need this. I'll give it to you this one time. But in the future, you can buy more from me. Although, I do hope you tend your animals well enough that See, the balloon is set to pop at just the right altitude. Then the parachute brings it safely back down so we can read all the data. Neat! If this launch is a success, I might give it a go in that strange forest past Parker's workshop. Reckon there's plenty to see over there. Ah, uh, thanks for your help, Tara. I'd know I'm new here, and it was right decent of you. The Farseer tells me that you've done well. Let's see if your observation and intuition is as strong with me. What will it be then? Do you want a potion that will turn the mare into a frog? <laughs> Nothing that advanced yet. See, it's the yet part that concerns me. I want a bottle of my favorite summer drink, Honey Mint Cooler. It's so refreshing on a hot day. You have a beehive, yes? Back home, we make a simple syrup with honey and mint. But brewing it in your distillery gives it an extra kick. If you are successful in completing my task, Perhaps more witches will be willing to reveal themselves. Hey, new witch, is it my turn to unmask? This thing is getting pretty itchy. Hey, you know, if you want to just take it off, I won't tell anyone. Nice try, but you gotta work for it. I need you to brew me a bottle of something so good, it'll make you float right off the ground. Literally. It's a levitation potion. So witches do fly. Yeah, but we need the right juice to do it. Don't go drinking it just yet. It's for your broom. You can't be serious. Witches don't actually fly on brooms. Of course we do, but not like 
regular boobs. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> yes, that would be ridiculous. Here's the recipe. You'll need to use your distillery as well as your cauldron to get it just right. Oh, it's my turn. Yay. I can't believe they made me wait until second to last. I hate secrets. But the coven itself is one big secret. Yeah, but it's one we keep together. So that's more fun. There's still friction with the normies, though. And since Otto was elected, it's gotten worse. So... Enter the charm potion. Are you serious? I asked Grandma if we could use the charm potion to smooth things over between the coven and the town last spring, and she said no. Well, yeah, dingus. You don't want to charm an entire town. Not only would that take forever, but it's a surefire way to make people go, huh, maybe one of my neighbors is a witch. One person at a time, though, less of a problem. Got it. One charm potion coming up. You have done well and proven yourself worthy of our trust. We have to be careful, as there are those that would do us harm. Why? The coven doesn't hurt anyone. The word witch conjures up old stereotypes and superstitions in people's minds. They might panic when faced with something they don't understand. That's why we keep our identities a secret. Our friends and family might not accept us if they knew the truth. But don't you think you should give them the chance to understand? I wish it was that easy. So I think you suspect who I am. Write this speed up incantation. When you cast it, any crops or cauldrons nearby will grow or brew faster. Bring it to me in town when it's ready. Okay, I'll make it speedy. Get it? Run along, novice. Cameron's influence troubles me. More and more people attend his services. Which means he'll persuade them to believe that there are malcontents out to do harm to the community. We need more information. Novice, Acolyte, the time has come for both of you to learn shapeshifting. How do you feel about a feline spy mission? Oh, yes! I see where you're going, and I like it. Feline spy mission? We'll learn how to turn into cats and then sneak into the consciousness center. How close is my guess? Telepathically close. Every witch learns from Ariel how to shapeshift themselves into animals, but they must wait until they're old enough not to misuse such power. I trust both of you to treat your animal hosts with kindness. Uh, what if I get stuck as a cat? <laughs> No, that would be funny. Ariel won't let you get stuck as a cat, I promise. Parker's mentioned more and more talk of rooting out the malcontents, and Cameron is often scribbling in this tiny little notebook of his. We need to know what it says. Visit Ravenwood Hollow for a transmogrification lesson. Then see if you can find an open door at the center to sneak through. This might be going too far. We could just get intel by attending this week's service. All of us showing up together? That would be too suspicious. Besides, we need that notebook. Hey, I'm not bothered by this. As long as we don't get caught. I thought you said the land here was ripe for all kinds of development. It is, but mucking around with public land won't go over well with my voters. <sighs> I'll tell you what doesn't go over well. No water for anyone, your voters included. What exactly is your plan, Mayor Soft? Uh, what's that about development? Oh, uh... I was just telling Otto about my personal development plans. Mm -hmm. I came to Fairhaven to allow my soul to bloom. Just like Thoreau, as the great man said, I went to the woods because I wish to live deliciously. I think he said deliberately, not deliciously. Well, sure, he could have said that too. <laughs> I was just stopping by to tell Marty that Fairhaven will always provide for his livestock, even in the lean times. Tara, Marty, have a good one. Animals are absolute sponges, you know that? I'm sure your crops are the same way. Ah, nature. So beautiful, so fearsome. Clouds break open. Release 
release your waters to the parched earth. Rain pour down. The summon rain incantation is useful, but soon even the resources you need for it will stop replenishing. If you have tasks you need to finish this summer, I suggest you complete them as soon as you can. We need to turn the season soon. Here is the fall ritual incantation. The gem you need may be even deeper in the mine, since the upper levels were stripped years ago. The key to the deepest levels was lost long ago, before the mine closed. But I cast a summoning spell to retrieve it. Take it. You should now be able to explore further in the mine. You will need to reach the very bottom to find the most precious gems. Tara! Come in, come in! That smoothie looks delicious. Have some of the pie that Juliet brought. And popcorn from Sebastian. Violet! Welcome! Thanks. Hey, bud. As I was saying, Sometimes it can be helpful for us to confront the strength of our emotions. It makes us realize what actions we want to take, and what those actions are. So, what did you think? Ah. <laughs> uh... It all felt kind of cliched, you know? Yeah. But, you know what they say. Sometimes cliches are true. Tonight I realized I want to do more. About my mom disappearing. Like, maybe I should still be looking for her. I don't know if that's what Vanessa meant. I gotta stop at home before going to the circle. See you soon, Tara. So, you are to learn how to walk a mile in a cat's paws, are you? Yes! <laughs> Finally! I've been waiting for years! <laughs> I don't usually say this, but... Patience. Don't forget respect for the creatures allowing you to use their corporeal forms. What? I, I thought we were going to learn how to transform into cat form. Don't be ridiculous. No one can do that. But we can politely ask animals if we can ride along in their bodies for a while. Exactly. Grey Malkin and Cleocatra here are experienced with ride-alongs. <coughs> oh, of course, of course. Tara, Violet. It's time for you to ask permission. Grey Malkin, you are the noblest of felines. I would be grateful to walk with you. Is this some sort of joke? A, a, a hazing ritual or something? Friends, please excuse the manners of our newest member. Her speciesism is brought on by ignorance rather than malice. Now, I can sense the thoughts of our fine friends with gills and feathers and fur. But what makes you unique, dear witches? is that you can share their consciousness. Dara? Cleocatra must know she can trust you. Oh, okay. Uh, Cleocatra, can I, um, walk with you? She said, of course. Now, take these shape-shifting incantations. You'll need to cast them on your chosen cat. Sandwiches. It worked. I'm a cat! Not just any cat, but you're familiar. And she sees so much more than humans. Now off with you. Do your skulking. We need to head to the Consciousness Center. We've got to find out what's been happening there. Wait, you sound normal. That's wild. <laughs> it raises so many questions, but we got a scamper. There's. It's go time. We need to be totally silent. If they catch us in here, they might think we're just mousers keeping the center clean. Ew! But they're not gonna turn a blind eye if we start spouting the Queen's frickin' English. Cat's cut my tongue. Got it. Notebook, notebook. Hmm. I wonder where it is. Ah! Here it is! 
and the presence of malcontent seems to be on the rise in our fair town. It's they who spread the pagan beliefs we saw at the summer festival. Whatever they may call themselves, their purpose is clear. To sow chaos and keep you from your true potential. That's a lie! Who is that? Find them! Huh? A disembodied voice! It has to be witches! Oh, I mean, a uh, uh, malcontent! <gasps> Thomas Graham! Whew! Cleo Gatra is fast! That run barely took any effort. Glad you enjoyed it, because I think the incantation is about to wear off. Man, human senses are nothing compared to cat senses. Whew, I know, right? Thank you, Grey Malkin. You're the best, Cleocatra. Now, let's take a look at this journal. <sighs> we have a heck of a report to make to the Coven at the next meeting. That's for sure. Terra, Violet, was your mission successful? <laughs> was it ever! Once Ariel taught us how to transmogrify, we practically waltzed into the center. Dragging that journal away in cat form wasn't easy, but we managed it. He started a heading for a list here. Possible malcontents. No names on it yet, though. That confirms my suspicions. This isn't just idle talk. Thank you, you two. You were excellent. What can I say? We make formidable spies. And you've performed admirably in your shape-shifting abilities. You may now shape-shift responsibly into a cat familiar after creating shape-shifting incantations of your own. In cat form, you'll be able to utilize their swift reflexes to catch fish and other useful items. Also, while the cat is in control, your body can be resting, so it allows for more hours in the day. Well done, both of you. Talented witch, I'm raring to start on your broom. So you're the one who makes everyone's brooms? Oh, I don't make, I bond and balance them. Brooms are bonded to the witch, and they're often passed down family lines. You'll be using Hazel's old broom, but we gotta make sure it's balanced for you. <laughs> don't, don't want you sliding off the back in midair, whoa! No, we certainly don't want that. But using my grandma's broom... I think it's a really nice idea. Me too. I've got my Da Spanner, which belonged to his mob before him. You've already got the broom, but uh, I'll also need Essence of Silver and some Levitation Potion. Just uh, don't get that silver out round Wesley. It, it, it would be rude, you know? I have a lot to learn about you all. I hope I don't embarrass myself. Oh no, you'll do fine! Psst, Tara. What's up? I've been thinking this summer about taking charge of my grief, like Vanessa said at group. I want to go through the standing stones and see if I can find out what happened to my mom. I don't think that's what Vanessa meant. Maybe not, but it's what I need to do. I have to find her. But we can't get in. Yes, we can. We just need a keystone. And I know where one is. Have you ever noticed that weird rock in the town hall display case? Yes. There's a sign that it says it's not native to the region, but was found in the mine. It was found there after Mom disappeared and Lena's dad lost his memory. I don't know who put it in the mine, but it doesn't belong in Town Hall. It belongs to the Coven. But the High Priestess doesn't want us to take it back and arouse suspicion. She says it's safer to stay out of the gloaming. Maybe she's right, Violet. Your mom and Lena's dad were much more powerful witches than we are. My mom would never have left one of us behind in there. And now? I'm old enough to go in after her. Ah, what the heck? Let's pull off a heist. <laughs> now that's more like it. No one will even notice us going to Town Hall as long as we're careful. We don't have to sneak past any people this time. Just some pesky locks. So, we'll need two lockpick incantations. One for the town hall front door, and one for the display case. I'm on Wellspring duty all week. And you're better at incantations anyway. Come visit me when you're ready. But remember to, you know, be cool about it. <sighs> all right, Tara. Get a load of this. My finest work yet. 
I don't want to say that it looks the same, but it looks the same. It's how she flies that matters, not how she looks, silly. <laughs> and she'll only fly for you. Now, you'll only want to use this broom in Fairhaven. Perry placed a charm here to keep witches from coming and going unannounced. Oh, and you can forget about taking your broom into the glo- Oops, I poured said too much. No, Lucifer. <sighs> never mind, never mind. The glow? What's the glow? Nothing, nothing at all. Anyway, uh, oh, here's some levitation potion. You'll, uh, need to keep her fully charged to fly around, so, uh, keep a batch of levitation potion brewing whenever you can. To retrieve a magic rock, first this locked door must unlock. Ooh, we are smooth. Let's not celebrate just yet. We still have the display case. Yes, here it is. To retrieve a magic rock, first this locked case must unlock. Oh, not again! Run! You run fast! Cause I'm so full of adrenaline. I'm a few seconds away from finally going through the stones. Hold up. Right now? Tonight? Obviously. No one can hold me back. At least let me come with you. I can't. What if it's dangerous? That's exactly why you should let me come. No one is going anywhere. What were you two thinking? Breaking into Town Hall? I didn't know an alarm would go off. Even if it didn't, you know how dangerous the gloaming is. That place? It changed my dad forever. And it took my mom. I need to find out what happened, Lena. I... I understand that. But no one goes into the gloaming alone. Not since... You know. Violet, I promise. We'll talk this all over at the Circle tomorrow. But for now... Give me the keystone, and go home. You were really going to go in by yourself? I didn't want you to get hurt. I'm sorry, Tara. Just when I figured I ferreted out all the surprises around here. By this flame, and by this sacred sign, be this the essence of the Divine! We call the spirits of the Harvest. We call forth the healing power of water. Once again, we turn the Wheel of the Year. We say farewell to the maiden summer. And we welcome autumn. A vision, Farseer? The town is soon to be beset by a dark force. What dark force? Did you see who it was? I couldn't see it clearly, but it's the same. It's the vision that first brought you here, isn't it, Farseer? We've long known this day would come. What day? What's happening? We'll discuss this later. The Farseer must rest. We all should get some sleep. We will need all our strength to prepare for what lies ahead. Thank you, everyone, for attending on such short notice. As some of you have already heard, someone broke into Town Hall last night. The thief then broke into the display case and stole an archaeological artifact. This is not an isolated incident. Cameron has reported disturbances at his consciousness center. The work of malcontents, I'm sure of it. Learn another word, Cameron. It may well have been malcontents, but until we know for sure, the Fairhaven Culture Committee will become the Neighborhood Watch. Hey, I volunteered for the Culture Committee. 
but I don't want anything to do with the neighborhood watch. Shh, Francis, it'll be fine. Now, I may just be... If immunity isn't safe, then how will any of us lead our daily lives? We need the neighborhood watch. If you have concerns, come talk to me. But later, because I have um, paperwork to do now. I hope you'll consider voting to re-elect Mayor Otto. He's brought so many great things to the community. Like me. <laughs> I'm joking. But seriously, he has been a true supporter of our mission here. Hi there. I'm sure you recall the warm way my husband welcomed you into our town. Yes, that was very nice. He's truly the best candidate to bring our community together. I know he would appreciate your support. Hi there, fellow farmer. You may have heard that I've thrown my hat into the ring for the mayoral election. I hope you're ready to build the new fair haven of the future. I do seem to build most of the things around here. That's the spirit. Morning, Damon. What brings you by? The debate is today. We should uh, get going so we don't miss any of the action. I wouldn't miss it. Pass the popcorn. <laughs> you sound like Violet. I think she's the only other person hoping Otto goes down in flames. Okay. Lead the way. Thank you all for coming to our first and last mayoral debate. Mr. Emerson and Mayor Soft have asked me to moderate. First question goes to Mayor Soft. What do you plan to do about the scourge of malcontents plaguing our fair town? Uh-oh, here we go. Thank you for the very neutral and fair question, Messenger Connor. I plan to strengthen our community by growing our neighborhood watch program and implementing a strict curfew of 10 p.m. It will be easier to spot the unsavory characters when law-abiding citizens are safe at home. What? That will torpedo my business! If we could please hold audience questions until the end. You don't have the right to tell us what to do. This is still a free town. I think the freedom to live in a safe town is the most important thing a mayor can give his constituents. Thank you, Mayor Soft. Now, on to a question for Marty Emerson. Mr. Emerson, as a new arrival to the town, how can you already claim to know what it needs more than the incumbent? Well, you're a new arrival, and you're the debate moderator. I... Uh, um... I'm just teasing you, Camp. You're doing a great job. Everyone in this town works really hard, and they deserve a mayor who works hard for them. Sure, we could maintain the status quo, but why not dream bigger? When I look at this town, I see so much potential. So typical. What's wrong with our town the way that it is? If you have a problem with it, move back to the city. Uh, again, if we could save questions until the end, can't new arrivals to town have an opinion, Thomas? Of course we can. Under my leadership, all Fairhaven citizens would be treated like equals. I'm ready to take Fairhaven forward into the future. I hope you'll all join me. Thank you, Mr. Emerson. That concludes our mail. You know, considering I helped get your ranch restored, I would have thought you might have some gratitude. Oh, I didn't realize I was supposed to pay that debt with loyalty. Oh, is Mayor Soft into paying debts now? That's news. No, I don't think that's fair. Everyone, could we please settle down? The election will be in five days. Make your voice heard at the ballot box. <laughs> what a hot mess. I'm worried. How will we meet if Otto really imposes a curfew? He'll never do it. Bruno doesn't even leave the bar before 10 most nights. I hope you're right. Morning, Giva. What are you up to? Headed to see the election results, of course. I can't vote, but I wouldn't miss this for the world. Fancy coming along? Right. Let's go. Here you go, Ter. It's so great to see all our neighbors performing their civic duty. Hmm. Who should I vote for? <sighs> Better the devil you know, I guess. Okay. Everyone. We're ready to tally the votes. 
Okay, settle down, everyone. The final vote count is as follows. Otto Soft, nine votes. Martin Emerson, eight votes. And two write-in votes for Lena Dahl Johnson. What? Lena? What is he talking about? I, I have no idea. I didn't ask anyone to vote for me. Well, I, I did prepare a speech in the hopes that common sense would prevail. As my first act as your newly re-elected mayor, I would like to announce the new members of the friendly Fairhaven Neighborhood Watch, Natalia and Thomas. Lena? Not here, Tara. Autumn is the time when the veil between worlds is at its thinnest. Traveling to the gloaming is easier than ever, which means we must recast the glamour over the stone circle. The glamour? I'm sorry, what is that? It's a spell that conceals our circle from prying eyes. Gloria and Giacomo were our best glamour casters. They kept the rest of Fairhaven from getting too close by accident. Now that they're both gone, the task falls to us. The Farseer Adept and I will cast the glamour, but once we do that, we'll all need to drink a potion that allows us to see through the glamour and find the stone circle. The potions are brewed from the flower of the hedgehog grass, which only grows in the gloaming. Two of you will need to go retrieve it. I want to go. Can I? You're still an acolyte, and acolytes can't go into the gloaming. Oh, so it's time for you to be promoted. From this day on, you'll be known as Herbalist. And to celebrate, I whipped you up some spirit flame. Here you go, Herbalist. Little will visitors to your shop know they're dealing with a bona fide certified member of the Fairhaven Coven. Congrats! Grandma would be so proud of you. Novice and Herbalist, the two of you will visit the outskirts of the gloaming and retrieve six hedgehog grass flowers. Adept, you will accompany them. I can't think of better company. When you're ready, speak to me again, and I will place the first keystone in its column. About dang time. This keystone opens a path between the stone circle and the least dangerous part of the gloaming. I was hoping we could all stay out of the gloaming for decades, but the rate at which magic is flowing from the wellspring means that's not possible. I will keep them safe, I promise. You know, I shouldn't be surprised by all the flashing sparklies at this point. But they are so pretty. Make good decisions, please. What? What is this? Ah, uh, yes. The barriers. We've never really understood where they come from. They are impervious to everything but pure magic. So, you'll need to blast it with your wand. Blast it? Oh, well, which spell should I use? No spell. Just point and shoot. Okay. Everyone, I'm sorry. It was my idea to break into Town Hall. I thought so. Nice work. And I helped. I'm sorry, too. Thank you, novice. The town of Fairhaven has had the Keystone since the mine operation shut down. I've been asking for it back, but I can't explain how something belonging to me wound up in the mine. Acolyte, novice, you put us in danger. However, you are also right about something. We've been too cautious towards the gloaming. Hear, hear! But we can't afford to be cautious any longer. The Wellspring needs offerings. And lately, it's become so hard to keep the balance. But before we can open the portal into the gloaming, we must first ensure that none of the villagers in town can accidentally wander in. For their safety and ours, the two of you will help us in this task. At least I get help this time. <sighs> I was afraid you were going to kick me out of the coven. Course not. We can't let go of anyone or we'll be too weak to turn the seasons. Also, we're too dang fond of you both. We'll make it up to you. We promise. Thanks, you two. Whoa. This place is amazing. I know, but be on your guard. It's beautiful, but dangerous. Like me. Sweet Snapdragons! I just saw a vine move. Everything here is alive with power from the wellspring. 
but they each translate that power differently. We're just looking for a flower, right? Yes, but these ones defend themselves from being picked. That's why they're called hedgehog grass flowers. Got it. Good work. Let's get back to the stone. The vines won't attack us as we retreat. We've cowed them into submission. Oh, hold up. I've never seen a plant like this before. I've only heard of them, but I think this is an echo blossom. Whoa. All the petals are covered in crystal. Echo blossoms look normal, but if you grasp the stem, the flower takes a short impression. And if you crack the layer of crystals... Oops! It's so slippery! <sighs> no. No way. <sighs> I hope this works. Echo blossoms are powerful magic. And my mama said not many of them are left, but... If I don't make it out of the gloaming tonight, I want someone to know I was here, and these will be my little breadcrumb trail. Gloria. Is it true, Violet? That was your mom? I... I can't believe I just... Yeah. That was her. So we know she came this way the night she disappeared. It seems so. Violet, are you all right? What a shock to your system. Oh my god! I saw her! I really saw her! Yes! We should look for more of these. Are you kidding? I'm not letting a single one get away. I need to know everything! Well, before we get into the search, we need to get back and speak with a coven about it. Ugh, fine. But then I want to come right back and begin looking. Six hedgehog grass flowers, just like you asked. Oh, wonderful. Well done, you three. Novice, distill the essence from the flowers in your sanctum, then brew six potions. We have something else to tell you as well. We found an echo blossom in the gloaming, and... and it had an impression of my mom! She was there the night she disappeared! By all the stars of the first witches! I didn't think echo blossoms grew there anymore. But if all three of you saw the impression of Gloria, we'll have to look into this. For now, herbalist, Rest up. Oh, honey, what a day you've had. In the meantime, novice, please attend to the Glamour Neutralization Potion. I hope you can have several cauldrons going. This potion takes a while to brew. I'll get to work on them right away. Ah! Oh, you twice blasted little... Did you just electrocute yourself? Yes, again. Oh, I was fiddling with these wires, but it's so dang hard to get an electrical charge reading without my versorium. So, pfft, pfft, over and over. S sorry, without your what now? My versorium. It's an incantation-powered device that detects electric charges. I use it for everything. Charge up wires with magical energy and you've got dangerous currents on your hands. Except I haven't seen the Versorium since I last went into the mines. So you lost it? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Classic Zephyr. <laughs> hey, uh, if you see a little metal box covered in runes down there, uh, yeah, could you pick it up? Sure. As long as it doesn't spark my fingers off. Ariel, I need to ask you something about the mines. Ah, an exquisite habitat. What do you wish to know? Are you the one who drove it out of business? <laughs> uh, at last, someone figures it out. Yes. And did you hide all the keys, too? <laughs> Most certainly. But I just... Why? The humans were making far too much noise. And the oars. They took and took. It hurt the animals that make the cave their home. The keys were a prank. A vicious one, true. But it worked. A lot of people worked in those mines. They had to leave once their jobs disappeared. Jobs, work, labor... Blah. That's all humans talk about. Perhaps, if they didn't salivate over jobs, they would have left the caves untouched. I can't tell Giva what actually caused the mines to close. That is true. You do not want to incur the Coven's wrath. Or Perry's, I can tell you. Oh, come in, come in, Tara. 
care for a muffin? Oh, I'm celebrating. I've just finished analyzing my first set of barometric readings. They suggest there's some sort of pressure barrier around the island. There really is something odd happening here. Tell me, have you noticed anything dodgy about the weather since you've arrived? Well, yes, but I am just a simple country farmer, ma'am. <laughs> Couldn't tell you a thing about the weather. A simple city girl turned farmer, you mean? I know you came here in the spring. I have to get to the bottom of this. What was grad school for otherwise? Sometimes I wasn't certain I'd make it. But now, here I am, in my own weather observatory. Oh, listen to me, Ramble. You're very kind, Tara. Come back any time. I've handed out the potions to everyone. Well then, all that is left is to drink your own. Ugh, tastes like grass. If you want to quibble over taste, thank you for all your help. I've been saving these for an emergency, but your propensity for trouble suggests you could use an emergency supply too. Remember the Versorium you found for me? Well, you'll never guess what I figured out when I went sniffing around that chair from the summer festival. It's the crack of dawn, so I hope it's good. So, uh, okay. Uh, last winter, I was running some experiments on that chair. Legend says it's made of the same wood as the wand tree. Zephyr! Didn't that seem relevant before? No! No, because when I tried attaching some magical lodestones to see if I could detect any currents, nothing. But when I tested it with the Versorium, the magical current readings went through the roof! Here's my hypothesis. Those lodestones primed the chair to receive magic, and when you sat in it, BOOM! The chair brought you right back to that place the lodestones came from. Ravenwood Hollow. Ravenwood Hollow. It was an accident, promise. Can, oh, uh, can you keep this a secret from Perry? I won't tell. I can see Perry getting really mad. She sure might. <laughs> Love her to death, but yep. Uh, thank you, Tara. Next time you go attaching lodestones to something... Oh, <laughs> I won't make that mistake again. Whoa. See you back in Ravenwood Hollow, my friend. Welcome, all. Ah, uh, maintaining the glamour over the stone circle and balancing the wellspring is wearing us too thin. Yeah, managing this and the bar, I feel like a slaw. You already were one. I think I know a way to relieve ourselves of this burden. I have some anemone seeds I never planted. What if one of us plants them in the gloaming? Ah. Uh. You want to harvest them once they've soaked up magic from the wellspring? Uh. Why can't I just plant them on my farm? That's not as dangerous. Because the soil on your farm isn't soaked in wellspring magic. Anemones are powerful magical plants that only thrive in places close to the wellspring. We could use the flowers to keep the glamour going without as much work. Exactly. Let me be the one to go back. If there are more Echo Blossoms out there, I'm gonna find them all. But you can't go alone. So I'll go with her. You sure you want to? <laughs> How else will I keep my adrenaline bumping? Besides, I promised Grandma that I'd be there for you. Ordinarily, I wouldn't let the two least experienced coven members go into the gloaming unaccompanied. But we're overwhelmed as it is, so... <laughs> if you let yourselves get hurt in there without me, I'll never forgive you. Chill. We got this! And while we were in there last time, I noticed some spinner web had crossed one of our paths. Their webs are incredibly tough, that dissolve in the light of spirit flame. This lantern will channel the spirit flame to destroy the web. And stop you from accidentally burning your eyebrows off. I'm not sure how many such webs will be in your way, 
so you may need more spirit flame to get through. You'll need to get past them, as I'm certain there are spots where the anemone will thrive in that direction. Oh, let me work the portal this time. Tara, let me know when you're ready to go. Tara, you... No time like the present. Let's do this. Here we go again. How are you feeling? Excited? Are you kidding? I can't wait to see what we find. Me too. <laughs> Maybe it's weird because of my mom and all, but this place fills me with energy. Now, let's find the perfect spot for those anemone seeds. We should follow the adept's advice and look on the other side of that spinner web. Whoa! Did you see that? That terrifying streaky ghost thing? Yeah. Hard not to. We better get back to the coven. That thing was headed straight for the portal to the stone circle. Woo! That all turned out fine. I take it back. Holy moly. What happened here? That wraith came straight out of the stone circle. We were so worried about you two. It's all good, Lena. Nothing happened to us. Is this our fault? That spirit got through because it's been harder and harder to balance the wellspring. Not your doing, so don't worry yourself about it. During summer, Harry mentioned that she was concerned about the wraiths. Well, as well she should be. They're dangerous spirits born of the places where the wellspring's magic has been sucked dry. Some of those djinn have been trapped inside the gloaming for centuries. This one got past us because it's darker than most, and more powerful. We must find and bind that genie again. Can I help? We must wait for it to reveal itself. In the meantime, be careful getting home tonight. Oh, hi, Lena. What's up? Trouble, I think. Mayor Otto has called an emergency town hall meeting, and there's a feeling in the air that has me pretty jumpy. So far, I've had bad experiences with town hall meetings in general, so... All right, let's go. I don't want to go in there and listen to Otto. Not after last night. Me either. But it'll look suspicious if we don't go. Come on. Thank you all for joining me. I know it's early, but this is an emergency. I received an anonymous tip yesterday that confirms what I suspected. There are witches in Fairhaven. I knew it! I could sense the malcontents! Simmer down, simmer down. What we need now is information. Has anyone seen or heard anything unnatural? I don't like the woods, same as you. But isn't there a less public way to... It's Sophia! Sophia is the witch. I've seen her. Oh no. Doing... what? Going out into the woods late at night. I... I was just looking for Juliet. She didn't come home by curfew. I, Natalia, Sophia's not a witch. She never hurt anyone. Malcontents have a way of tricking the innocent into defending them. I can't believe this. You think... You think I'd really... Quiet! We need order now more than ever. I will investigate Natalia's claims as fully as I can. We'll hold a trial for Sophia a week from today. You can't do that? Shh! I can, and I have to. Something's been troubling Fairhaven since... since I was a little boy. And we will figure out what it is. See you all next week. And in the meantime, stay safe. Why would Natalia say that? She always seemed nice. It wasn't Natalia, was it? It was the Wraith. The Wraith's messing with someone already? I don't know Natalia that well, but I, I can't imagine her accusing the warmest person in Fairhaven. Maybe the High Priestess knows how to fix this. We'll find out tonight, yeah? We better, because we have to fix this. Adept, did you get a chance to examine Natalia? I did. I asked her to stop by the clinic for a cup of tea. And? It's as we all feared. The wraith that escaped the gloaming last night has possessed Natalia. This is all my fault. If we hadn't gone into the gloaming... That shouldn't have destabilized the wellspring so profoundly. Something strange is going on. How do we get Natalia to take back what she said? This happened to a cousin of mine when I was a boy. Banishment is the only way to make a wraith leave for good. That's complicated magic. Well, 
Complicated problems call for complicated magic, don't they now? We'll need something that Talia's made with her hands. Next, something that carries a memory dear to her. And we will need a sapphire to capture the genie, and fennel seed powder to bind it. Fennel seed powder? If you grow some fennel, you can pound it up in your mortar and pestle. Can't I just grind up the seeds instead of growing them? Nonsense. We need fresh seeds from fresh fennel. Novice, can you gather these four things? I'll do my best. Bring the things that hold a part of Natalia, what she's made, and what carries a memory to me once you've got them. I'll look within them. If they're powerful enough, I'll show you how to make the banishment incantation. Be swift. Sophia only has a week until her tri- That scientist wants rocks from the mine, does she now? I guess it's pointless to ask how you know that already. Yep. It'd be for the best if you gave me those rocks instead of her. Why? Is she going to turn them into some weapon of mass destruction? Ugh. Novice. Giver seems friendly, but you just don't know. And this fall, we can't be too careful. I want to see what she discovers, though. Huh. Tell you what, girl. Bring me the rocks, and we'll both find out what they tell me. Okay, sure. You do have a point. Farseer, I have something to show you. How about this iron she made? Good, good. Hand it to me, and I'll read it. How do you read something without words? You give it a darn close look, of course. Hmm. Let's see. Careful, man. Careful. What are you doing? Who? Ah, uh, she would curse you, wouldn't she? She's bitter. Tell me what you're seeing. You can't see? Ah, uh, sorry. I saw a man. Must have been Natalia's pa. And a woman. Not Natalia's ma. Daughter of the local Bobka. Bobka? Isn't that a pastry? It also means spirit whisperer. A witch. Looks like Natalia's pa fell in love with the Babka's daughter back in Russia, but the girl died, and the Babka cursed her pa with bad luck. A curse that he passed on to his daughter years later. Natalia. That's right. You've done well, novice. We can use this for the incantation. Come back when you've got something else to show me. Oh, I always love when you stop by, Shelby. Take care. Hey, I didn't realize you came into town or bought things from Lena's store. Marcus is my friend, yeah? Why wouldn't I buy canned goods here? My dad lives in Milkwater, remember? Parker and I run the store now. Oh, yes. Hard to keep all that straight. Oh, you knew Lena's father? How long have you lived on the island? <laughs> Here's a riddle for an answer. What is older than we can fathom, but is reborn every month? I'm thinking, but I'm stumped. What is the answer? Well, now, keep thinking, and it may yet come to you. There's no such thing as a simple question, Terra Wild, or a simple answer. Ah, classic Shelby. Be kind to him. He understands time differently than us. I'll do my best. Hiya! Zephyr! <sighs> you scared the living daylights out of me. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting that you're not used to teleportation. <laughs> so what you doing? I was just watering my crops. By hand? Gear wheels and grease, girl. <laughs> Just because you're human doesn't mean you have to stick with human tech. <laughs> if you want to learn a more efficient method, swing by my shop anytime. <laughs> See ya! Wait! I hate when you do that. Who are you talking to? Thomas! I was just talking to my... my watering can. I do that sometimes. Why are you here? I was checking to see if your well's working again now that the drought's over. But I can see it is, so I'll be on my way. 
wash ashores. Well, we have to do something. What's the point of having magic at all if we don't use it to help that poor lady? I use my magic to help all the time. But I help creatures, not humans. Humans destroy each other. It's all that makes them unique. Ahem. As the only one of us who used to be a human, let me say that isn't true. Humans are afraid of what they don't know. But so are the Fae. We're not different. And I can't hold up here, watching Sophia suffer. Say you help her. What if you're discovered? Hmm? What if you transform? Interfering with human affairs does more harm than good. I would know. But you're... Wait, wait, can't I just... Oh, drag, I don't like this. Perry and I are hundreds of years old. We've seen scads of witch trials. Never ends well. And as the senior members of Ravenwood Hollow, we're breaking this tie. No interfering. Ah, well... Horse feathers! How much of that did you hear? Uh, enough to get the gist. No helping. A decision I have to abide by, technically. But if there's anything you need... Wow. Thanks, Wesley. That's very... You came! Ha! Ready to make your first whirly gig? Zephyr, you can't just pop up in my form like that. Now Thomas thinks I talk to my watering can. Oh, Thomas. He really needs more help around his farm. I wish I could talk to him sometime, but... Well, rules are rules. Anyway, uh, a whirly gig is an enchanted machine that'll take care of farm chores for you. You can build one for watering your plants, chopping down trees, or harvesting crops. They'll save you lots of time. We'll need some metals to build your first one. Bring them to me, and I'll get to work on it right away. <sighs> I'm so nervous for Sophia. I feel sick. Do you have the incantation? I didn't have time to finish it. Oh no. Let's not shilly-shally about. Citizens of Fairhaven, Sophia Moretti stands accused of witchcraft. It's not true. I've been telling you all week, Otto. Listen to me. Natalia Kuznetsov, you put forward the accusation. Please tell us everything in detail this time. What do we do? This is awful. I don't think we can do anything. Like I said, I saw Sophia go into the woods after dark. She bent down and picked something up. Must have been harvesting plants to use in a ritual. What? That isn't true. I dropped my keys, that's all. So you did bend down to pick something up? Yes, my keys. She was also saying strange words, repeating them over and over. I was calling Juliet's name. She hadn't come home by curfew, like I told you. Did anyone else see this? Oh, I'm conflict averse. You all know that, but I saw Sophia out there too, and I don't think she was calling Juliet's name. She was speaking in some other language. How could you, Angus? After all the recipes we've shared. It isn't personal, I swear. I just want Fairhaven to be safe. Thank you, Angus. You're being a good citizen. Sophia, I pronounce you guilty. What? You barely have any proof. What are you going to do? Make me leave Fairhaven? No, no, we can't cast out malcontents. There are peers. We must rehabilitate them. Sophia, I know a great rehabilitation center back on the mainland. A friend from the League of the Conscious Mind runs it. Why don't you go there for a week? But... But... I have to take care of Juliet. Don't worry. Juliet can stay with me. Well, Sophia? All right. Wonderful! Citizens, thank you for coming out today. It's such a joy to see a community that cares. What the? How come nobody is pointing and shouting? Because non-witches can't see wraiths. But where is it going? I wish I knew. <sighs> I can't stop thinking about Sophia. She had to suffer for something we messed up. And now Otto can say his neighborhood watch is important because it flushed out a witch. If he only knew. Journeyman, we did our best to keep the wellspring balanced. But all that trying amounted to a hill of beans. The wraith still got out. It's the danger we always feared would emerge from the wellspring. It's true. We have to do a better job of keeping this island safe. But for now, let us turn our attention to the changing of the seasons. It won't be easy this time. Novice. 
herbalist. How would you feel about another trip to the gloaming? I thought you'd never ask. Yeah, what she said. Look, normally we wouldn't need herbs and flowers from the gloaming to turn fall into winter, but the season-changing ritual draws heavily on the wellspring, so I think we can't be too careful. You'll be looking for a mushroom called the Trompette de la Mort. Look, I don't remember much French from high school, but I think you're asking us to find a death trumpet. Correct. Ooh, I've never seen one before. They grow in places where the wellspring magic once flowed, but then got cut off, which gives Trompettes de la Mort special properties. But don't worry, they just look like funky chanterelles. They're not dangerous, I think. And they're often found inside favoring, so we know what to look for when we're in the gloaming. Novice, once you and Herbalist have found a Trompette de la Mort, combine it with a tiger lily flower and a pearl to make an incantation for turning the seasons. The rest of us will stay here and tend to both the glamour and the wellspring. We're on it. Uh, hey. How's it going? I'll be honest, Tara. I feel real strange. What do you mean? Like... Maybe I never saw Sophia out there? No, but Angus said he did too. And Cameron told me I did the right thing. If Sophia was out in the woods picking herbs, why would that be so bad? Because witches bring bad luck, of course. Oh. Yeah. Oh, here's the fairy ring! <sighs> but I don't see anything inside. Huh. Me neither. Unless... Oh no. Inside fey rings, size can get weird. It's possible that everything growing within the ring got shrunk. See? We have been plant jinxed. That's not a real thing. We're witches. Jinxes are real. Point taken. How are we supposed to find this fungus? Well, if we used a shrink potion while standing inside the fey ring, we could get down on the trompet's level. But... But... We'd also need a grow potion or we'd be stuck that size. We'll need two of each. Here are the recipes. You better get to it. We don't have much time left. Wait, me? Uh, excuse me, Miss Herbologist. Aren't you the potions expert? And any self-respecting herbologist wouldn't allow this teaching opportunity to pass them by. Of course. All right, I will get brewing. Is my whirly gig done? Yep, here it is. Um, it doesn't do much. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I, I haven't powered it yet, silly. <laughs> I'll deliver the whirly gig to your home free of charge. But you'll need a powered gem like this one to power it. Now this baby will do a great job, but he won't last forever. Different gems can hold different charges. If you bring me more, I can charge them so you can replace this one when it runs out. I can also make other kinds of whirly gigs for different tasks. Mm, but won't my neighbors notice that I have a... Magical device watering my crops for me. If anyone asks, just say you imported it from Europe. And people will believe me? Yeah! How else do you think Hazel ran the farm on her own all those years? All right, let's do it. Huh. I don't feel any different. Oh my goodness. Oh, I hope there aren't any bugs around here. We probably look delicious. Let's snag that mushroom before any creatures get ideas. As long as we're within the Fey Ring, no harm should come to us. Don't venture outside the ring. I don't want to get squashed by a spinner. If you want to get big again, we'll need to use the grow potions. But I think we should explore everything here before then. Yes, another one! Over the years, the gloaming itself has changed. It used to be fully alive, you know? Everything bloomed. But now there are some places where nothing grows. I worry that when Violet and Sebastian are grown, there'll be nothing left. She was always stressed. I thought it was because she had a lot to manage, being the mayor's wife and her mom and all. But this must have stressed her out too. Because it affected you. And your brother. And she was right to be worried. Please don't let me stay small. Please don't let me stay small. Oh, I'm not gonna lie. I was a little worried we'd be stuck this way forever. Now, let's go before we have to use more shrink potions. So, how long were you planning on letting me believe that you lived in milk water? Well, it's what the residents of Fairhaven have always assumed, so... 
I just went with it. Is it strange living among the Fey? Since you were born human. Yes. I still feel like I have a lot to learn about Fey customs and rules. I do miss having low-stakes human conversations sometimes. But I'd rather avoid going to town if it's not necessary. Well, if you're nervous about being around civilians, you could come visit the Coven at our circle. <sighs> I'm not sure that's a good idea. You only meet at night. And I think I make some of your members uncomfortable when I'm in my wolf form. Plus, sometimes I have a hard time controlling my howling. I hope you don't mind my saying so, but I see a lot of hazel in you. I hope you decide to stay on and come visit us in Ravenwood Hollow whenever you need anything. Hmm, baking something new, Angus? Yep, it's my little bro's favorite. I'm the middle child of three boys, so it was nonstop chaos growing up. <laughs> but I could always get Jamie to calm down if I gave him one of these. Uh, you don't have any siblings, do you? That must have been a bit lonely growing up, no? Not when I was little, because I spent my summers here and grew close to my grandma and grandpa. Well, of course. Having a grandma like Hazel must have been so much fun. Francis and I are both the middle child of three child families. Maybe that's why we're perfect for each other. We're used to being the overlooked cheese in the sandwich. <laughs> uh, I hope Francis is able to find a place for himself here and that everyone sees just how special he truly is. Hey, Angus, what's going down? My wedding cake is what? <laughs> uh, so my fridge in the bakery is full of tiny individual tarts for a fundraiser Mrs. Soft is hosting for Mayor Soft. And if I put the cake in our fridge at home, Francis will see it. I know Hazel baked a lot. You must have a good sized fridge. <laughs> Can I borrow some space? Pretty please? Of course. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll just pop it in. Bye! Ooh. What's that smell? Spoiled milk? Uh-oh. <gasps> of course the fuse blew! The wiring is probably- Oh, it's too late to make a new cake. Hello! Angus said he was storing his cake in your fridge, and I've got the edible flowers. Ew! Tell me that melt the disaster isn't. It is. Can we magic it back together somehow? How? That buttercream has to be spoiled. Unless... See the Farseer. He can help you. Okay, I guess it's now or never. Tick, tock, turn back the clock, and let the past be unlocked. Yoo-hoo! I finally got rid of that tart! Uh, I mean, those tarts. I would never call Mrs. Soft. <laughs> anyway, uh, can I pick up my cake? <laughs> sure. Go ahead. Thanks. You're the best, Tara. For being so kind, I've brought you a couple spare tarts I had from the catering gig and the recipe to make your own. Oh, thanks for being my friend date to Angus and Francis's wedding. Now Sebastian won't rag on me for being single. Or maybe that's just wishful thinking. He is my little sib. Oh no. I didn't think about what to wear. Should I change? The ceremony is in the woods, so I think they're keeping it pretty casual. Besides, you could wear a potato sack and still look good. Hey, you too. Let's go. Cameron? Oh, it's such a lovely day for a wedding, no? Well, Angus thought it would be lovelier in our consciousness center, but alas, Francis was quite set on a civil ceremony, it seems. 
I am honored that Angus and Francis have chosen me, their mayor, to preside over their special day. Angus, do you take Francis to be your lawfully married by me husband? I do. And Francis, do you take Angus to be your husband? I do. I now pronounce you husband and husband. Witches of the Fairhaven Coven, take your places around the circle. Once again, we turn the wheel of the year. From witches new and witches old, we greet the coming of the cold. We call forth the spirits of quiet and reflection. We call the candles flame, surrounded by darkness. We say goodbye to the bounty of the fall harvests. And welcome winter. Snowing! I love snow! <laughs> A good sign it is, too. Means the island is in harmony with itself. I'd say I agree with you, Farseer, but uh... Belladonna's knickers, it's coming down hard now. Quick, everyone get home. I don't want to treat any of you for frostbite tomorrow. Morning, Kim. Hi, Tara. Mrs. Soft has given me the, uh, honor of organizing the Winter Feast this year. See, every household contributes something, and we all gather together for a feast on the shortest day of winter. What a nice tradition. Sophia used to run things, but, well... Right. So, I'm making a roast with a shiitake mushroom sauce. I hear shiitake grow in the mine, but... I don't do small enclosed spaces. Not at all. Uh, don't worry, I am on it. Thanks. Wait, do I have to bring something to the Winter Feast too? You're a household in Fairhaven, aren't you? Hazel used to make roasted salmon every year. What if you tried that? Challenge accepted. I'm looking forward to sharing some salmon-y goodness with the whole town. Oh, if only everyone else in town had that enthusiasm. I hope Kai even remembers to bring something this year. Hi, Priestess. Our offerings don't seem to balance the wellspring for very long. I give my best flowers, but then it seems I must do so again a short while later. Huh. Something strange is afoot. We're not draining the wellspring so much as all that. Right, okay. We must return to the wellspring the gifts it has pushed through the earth. But that will mean venturing deeper into the heart of the gloaming. Novice. It is time for you to improve your wand. Otherwise, you will not be able to pass the stronger challenges you may encounter in the gloaming. You will need essence from the hellebore, strongest of the winter flowers, a sapphire for the handle, and crushed pearl dust to strengthen it. But pearls may be hard to come by. This incantation will call stronger waves to wash upon our shores for a brief while. It may be of use. Ooh. I better find some way to keep Kai out of the water for a few days. Summoning a storm will be good practice. Weather magic strengthens your powers for changing the seasons. Once you've summoned the storm, speak to Zephyr. She can upgrade your wand for you. Hey, Tara, if it's no trouble, can I speak to you for a moment? Sure, what's up? I want to help Messenger Cameron prove that the League is a force for good in the community. I feel badly, you know, about Sophia. I still can't explain what happened. It's not just about weeding out the malcontents. We can help our neighbors in other ways. Anyway, Cameron wants to start a new charity initiative. A soup kettle. We'll be offering free soup to anyone in the community who wants it. That's a wonderful idea. I thought you'd like it. Of course, we're gonna need a really big pot. I'll take any copper you have to spare. Once I've got enough, I can hammer out the soup kettle. You're back! I missed you. Are you okay? Oh, don't worry about me. I feel... 
Great. Wait, really? Sure. That retreat was just what I needed. I was manifesting negative energy. That's what I learned. It was sweet of Cameron to help me out. That's, uh, g good to hear. Huh. The retreat was <laughs> not cheap, though. I'll have to increase my prices so I can pay Cameron back. Wow, Sophia, that's really rough. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm done manifesting negative energy. my wand for me oh happy to but um i do think you shouldn't venture too far into the gloaming i know i know perry already gave me a talking to about it the wraiths you come upon may have tapped the wellspring's magic closer to the source you see they'll be harder to capture if they escape through the portal i'll be careful i promise here you go tara Give it a wave. I want to make sure it's well balanced. It's beautiful, Zephyr. Your finest work yet. Ah, uh, thanks. I, 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 I do what I can. <laughs> The Winter Wonderland! Oh. Uh, was it me? I'd better go check and see how everyone is doing. No reason to panic, everyone. She is still a seaworthy vessel. As soon as the ice melts, we'll have the best engineer in Milkwater come over on a tugboat and pull her out into the harbor for repairs. That could be a while. If my forecast is correct, we could be socked in for weeks. Now, let's try to remain positive. Give us right. At the very least, we ought to try and patch the hole in the hull before she takes on too much water. I'll help. That's the spirit! You see, with the right attitude, we'll get through this together! Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to, um, uh, check on the town stores. Never seen a winter like this on the island before. Hmm, neither have I. I worry that we are too few in number to turn it on our own. We've lost so many in recent years. Violet's mother, then Giacomo Moretti, and now Hazel. There's help out there, if we're ready to seek it. I think I know your meaning, but we've never had to call a witch to the circle before her powers came in. Wait, we can call a new witch to join us? Like... On the phone? No, with an incantation. Perhaps Wesley will have the one we need among his scrolls. Hi, Tara. Need some parchment or maybe some new ink? Actually, I'm hoping you might have a special incantation in your ancient scroll collection. We need to call a new witch to the Coven Circle. Now that you mention it, I do think I saw something like that when I was doing inventory last week. Ah, here we are. You'll need at least four members of the coven to cast it round the circle with you. And here's the full list of ingredients for the incantation. You're calling a new witch? Oh, that will pull a lot of magic from the Wellspring. It's unstable as it is. Your High Priestess shouldn't act rashly out of desperation. The island has seen long winters before. Really? When? What happened? Oh, what happened was, a bunch of colonists froze! Their leader couldn't resist the siren song of the stones. Hey, I've known plenty of sirens, and they're unfairly maligned. 
It's not their fault since sailors can't steer their ships. Uh-huh. Point is, no one made it out of their camp in the woods that winter. I grew up here in that story, and I bet Thomas did too. That's why he keeps clear. Right. And it was the call of the gloaming that brought them to ruin, not the winter. Take heed, Witchling. We any closer to sorting out who shattered our gate into pieces, High Priestess? No. But whoever did it left the cauldron and altar unbothered. The glamour must still be holding. But who outside of the Coven or Ravenwood Hollow would have the power to break the gate in the first place? Um, I hate to bring this up, but... It's not just magical intruders we need to worry about. Giva has a new drone that she's been testing in order to release something called drop songs into the atmosphere. That must be the secret new project she was talking about. The good news is she's not very good at piloting it yet. I only know she has it because she crashed it by my house. That's bad news, actually. If she were to crash it by our circle, she would come in after it. We can't risk it. Novice, you must find a way to sabotage this new drone so that it won't work. But what if it could help us learn about the island's weather? Our coven alone is tasked with changing the seasons. We've never failed in our duty. You will need Zephyr's assistance. I'm sure she can fashion something that will prevent the drone from working. Hiya, Tara! Wanna see these build plans? Always. What's your latest invention? Oh, gosh, I, I didn't invent this. It's what humans would call an Archimedes screw. Very old. Okay, regardless of who invented it, what does it, uh, do? Oh, it pumps water from one place into another. So I figure I can replace the fairy's bilge pump with one of these. That way, the fairy won't take on more water while I'm repairing it. I mean, while Thomas, Parker, and me are repairing it. <laughs> All together. That's genius. What are you going to make the Archimedes screw out of? Bronze is best. It holds up real well in salt water. I've got loads of tin lying around to make a bronze alloy, but no copper. Oh, could, could you fetch me some? Sure, no problem. Woohoo! <laughs> Thanks! I can't wait to get started! My parents sent me a letter. I can't believe it. They're congratulating me for winning my grant, and... And they want me to write back. Is that a bad thing? They had me signed up with the most prestigious matchmaker in Mumbai. I tried so hard to get out of it. I told them I wanted to finish college first. But finally, I had to tell them that I was never going to marry a man. Any man. It wasn't me liking women that upset them. It was the loss of prestige that I wouldn't make a match. So they cut me off and I don't know if I can forgive them. It's been a long time. Maybe your parents have realized how badly they hurt you and they want to make it better? Maybe. Or maybe they're just trying to draw me back home. I need time to decide whether or not I'll reply. But it's been so kind of you to listen. I haven't had a friend like you in a long time, Tara. Listening to each other is what friends are for. <sighs> I knew it! I knew we'd find more Echo Blossoms! Do you want to listen to it? <laughs> what kind of question is that? Ever since I was a little girl, the wraiths have been getting stronger. Once when I was ten, a wraith escaped, took over poor Mr. Gibson, and he let all his cows loose. <laughs> it was funny then. Not so funny now. I heard about Mr. Gibson. I had no idea he set his cows loose because of a wraith. What else could my mom have told me if she'd been there? I'm sorry, Violet. Don't be sorry. Coming here is the closest I've gotten to her for years. Hold up. What's this? Violet, is that another keystone? It's gotta be. Let's take it back and show the High Priestess. High Priestess, is this another keystone? It is. How did you... Never mind. I'll hold on to it for now. Let me know when you're ready. Yeah, okay. Let's go. I'm ready to go past the second pillar, High Priestess. Very well. Novice and Herbalist, take your places on the portal. Ah, oh, look at all this. You really are a magpie, you know? Tara, look! Another Echo Blossom! 
no one seems to be taking Shelby's prophecy seriously. Lena and Giacomo just want to keep the town from finding out about us. Arno and Kaya are too busy planning their move back home, and Hazel seems distracted lately. But I can't forget what Shelby said. A daughter of the coven will be in mortal danger. I will protect Violet, even if I have to do it alone. There... was a prophecy? About me? Why didn't anyone in the coven tell me? It really is my fault she came in here. She was trying to protect me. You can't blame yourself, Violet. It is not your fault. You were just a kid. I'm going to find her, Tara. No matter what, I need to know what happened. Is that what we're looking for? I think. Yes. Yes, it is. Go get it. You go get it. I would, but these are new shoes. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> oh, I guess I'm too heavy for it. Rude. We need levitation potion. How are you not even carrying any? You know what? I have been a little busy. What with magical wraiths and, and storms and whatnot. Okay, great. Now, drink it. What is it with you and making me guinea pig these random potions? How do you know it's safe? Well, if it isn't, Amir will fix you right up. <sighs> Why do I let you talk me into these things? Oh, it seems to be working, and I still have all my fingers and toes. Any extra ones? What? Nothing. Perry mentioned that there might be some way to protect the islanders from the wraiths. We will need more of the fennel seed powder to capture the wraiths when they escape from the gloaming. You can help us maintain a steady supply. And the best way to protect the islanders is to keep the wellspring in balance. Winter does make it difficult to grow and gather offerings, but there is still abundance if you know where to look. Go and gather some pine cones. We will make an offering for our observance of the shortest day of winter. Here is the summon witch incantation, High Priestess. Well done. Everyone take your places while I prepare the incantation. Tonight we call one who may aid us in our magical workings. Join your brothers and sisters of the Fairhaven Coven. Together we stand, witches all, demanding that you heed our call. Oh no. I fell asleep in front of the TV again, didn't I? Angus! Angus, wake me up! This is no dream, and do not be afraid. You're among friends. There really are witches here. Angus was right! Look, I'm not one of you. I don't care what you might have heard about my brother. I had nothing to do with that. Fabio may have the gift as well. But you've got it in you to be an even greater witch than your brother, Francis. We need your help. Fairhaven needs your help. You're not listening to me. I'm no witch. What was that? Ah! Francis, wait! No, no, no! Stay away from me. I'm warning you! Here are the pine cones, High Priestess. Well done. We will fashion them into a wreath. With this offering, we welcome the rebirth of the sun. Whoa. Cool. How long will the offering boost the wellspring? If we are prudent with our use of magic, it may last us some time. But eventually, we must turn the season so that we can harvest spring crops once more. Oh, Terra. Good. I was just about to send someone for you. We've called an emergency town hall to discuss the ferry. Now, folks, I know you all have questions about how we'll get on until the ferry's fixed, and we'll answer those. But first, we must figure out what happened to the ferry. Parker and Thomas have checked her over from stern to stern and <clears throat> found nothing suspicious. However, I still wonder if the ferry wasn't just damaged by the snowstorm. Maybe someone tried to put the ferry out of service. Uh, I really think it was the ice. Citizens of Fairhaven, this is your chance to serve your community. Did any of you see someone tamper with the ferry? Oh no, not this again. I saw something. 
At night, Marty has gone down to the shore near the ferry. A lot. No, Angus. No, Angus doesn't mean it. He doesn't know what he's saying. <sighs> Are you saying I'm not smart enough to understand? Of course not, Cariño. You're, you're brilliant. It's just that you're also kind and thoughtful and, and... I know what I've seen. Marty says he's a rancher, but he doesn't know anything about animals. Why is he here? I just passed my animal science classes. I never tried to hide that. We already found one malcontent in Fairhaven, and Messenger Cameron said that malcontents don't work alone. No reason to fear, Marty. We helped Sophia overcome her malcontention, right? I... yes. Yes, that's right. I bet my bar auto paid you to say that. It makes his only political opponent look even worse. I'd never bribe someone. Besides, I won the election. Otto, you know I don't like these spectacles, but something about Marty doesn't add up. Thomas, you are literally my neighbor. Not by choice. Don't fret, Marty. You'll have a fair trial, just as Sophia did. More than anything, I want Fairhaven to feel safe. That's what I'm committed to, not my own personal benefits. You oily double-crossing! I'm sure there's no need for that. That's right. Let's take a week to cool our heads and let Marty prepare. We'll meet back in Town Hall after seven days. That will be all. This is even worse than last time. No theory means Otto's power tripping. He seems genuinely afraid. I don't care what he feels. He's putting people in danger, eh? Though, I'd hate to be Francis right now. If you thought you had to learn about the Coven fast. Oof. He's had a rough few days. We'll hear all about it at the next Coven meeting. Francis! Angus is... Not himself. He would never accuse Marty of being a witch. Does it have something to do with whatever it was that came flying out of the woods? Yes. I'm afraid Angus is under the influence of a dark spirit. We call them wraiths. We'll need your help to free him. I'll do whatever it takes to cure Angus. But that doesn't mean I'm joining you in this group that meets in the woods. We need you to fashion an iron amulet to capture the genie. Done. Anything else? Yes. I know it might be hard to hear, but the wraith didn't pick Angus at random. He has an existing prejudice against witches. And the Wraith bound itself to that. Help the novice find out why. I feel weird asking this, but you must have a spare key to Angus's shop, right? I need to find a personal item to use in the spell to free him from the Wraith. Yes. Here. You should go at night. Or on Angus's day off. If he catches you, I never gave you the key. Understand? What do you think, Farseer? Hmm. I think Angus uses too much butter in his baking. No, I, I mean, what do you see? I see a little boy hiding in a closet. His parents have brought the priest for their eldest, who's complaining of visions, a witch at the edge of the woods, beckoning him at night. The curse. The priest says his rights, whatever it is rises out of the eldest son and finds the middle one, hiding where his parents don't see him. It passed Angus. Maybe he's seen one of us and thought we were his witch. <sighs> Could be. Made him an easy mark for the wraith. That's for certain. You have what you need now to write the incantation to free Angus. Mind you get it done in time. I have the locket. Do you have the incantation? Yes. I'm ready and waiting. This better work. I want Angus back. The real Angus. Wait. You're going to go sit with him? He is my husband. You're still my friend, but... Come on! You know he's possessed. You're a witch now. Excuse me. That has not been fully decided yet. Citizens of Fairhaven, we gather today to hear another case of witchcraft, this time against Marty Emerson. This... this can't be legal. Mayors can't try people for witchcraft. I'll sue you. Angus Seaton, you say you have evidence of Marty's guilt? Yes, Mayor Soft. 
You see, I was taking my evening stroll. It's now or never. Dark Wraith, you have been found. I wish you to be bound. Oh, my head hurts. I'm having a hard time thinking straight. I, yeah. Wait, what am I saying? Marty's not a witch. How is this happening again? Listen to me. No, this is a difficult moment for you, isn't it, Marty? Or should I say... Martin Maplethorpe! That's, uh, not my name. Oh? Your father isn't Lance Maplethorpe? Real estate mega-developer? The guy who ran off to the Bahamas with his girlfriend after he got caught making shady deals? He was never convicted of anything! You didn't come here to find the best spot for the next Maplethorpe Resort. Quo, what? You didn't try to buy Sophia's diner and Thomas's farm? And everyone thought I was being too suspicious. Look, it's true, it's true. I admit it, I admit everything. I mean, not the witchcraft stuff, that's messed up. After my dad left the country, I had to dig us out of a financial hole. So I came here to see if it was a good spot to build a Maplethorpe signature villa. That's why you saw me down by the shore, Angus. I was taking pictures of the view and sketching out building plans. I wanted to get to know the island first, so I pretended to be a rancher. But I always planned to tell you who I was. The only one who knew this whole time was Otto. Well, that's an exaggeration. You were jumping at the chance. Said a resort would be great for Fairhaven's economy. Otto, is that true? You know what a resort would do to the ocean around here? And the fish? I... I was evaluating Martin's proposal. So you let him lie to all of us? Being the mayor is a difficult job, Violet. Not everyone can handle the hard choices, like your father. Excuse me? This man may have things to atone for, Otto, but he's not a malcontent. Now, I've got some questions for you. I am not relevant at this time. Meeting adjourned. I better go talk to Francis. It worked. I can't believe it. Thank you for your help. You made it happen, too. That locket was perfect. Thank you. Oh, Angus must be so confused, my poor cariño. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not every day you get a wraith exercised. But he'll be okay now, right? He sure will. Hey there, Marty. And Thomas. Ha! <laughs> Bet you never thought you'd see the two of us together, huh? <sighs> But we share a common concern. We've heard howling coming from this area every night lately. If you don't mind, can we cut through your property to see if we can find any wolf tracks? Wolves are a threat to all the livestock on the island. And I want to make sure they're captured humanely and relocated to a proper habitat. Go ahead. But I don't think you'll find anything. Well, that howling has to be coming from somewhere. We're going to check the mountain pass area first. We'll let you know if we find anything. Uh-oh. If they start looking around the lake, they might accidentally wind up in Ravenwood Hollow. I'd better check up on Wesley to see what's going on. Wesley, some of my neighbors have been complaining of howling lately. Everything okay? Oh, I'm so sorry, Tara. Now that it's winter, nights have gotten longer, and I'm running out of my stock of potion. What's in it? Maybe I could brew you up a batch. I don't know. I got it from a witch I met before I moved to Ravenwood Hollow. I think I might know the recipe, but it will require wolfsbane from the gloaming. One no howling potion coming right up. So do you think this will really work? Look, even in magic, some things have... Uh, what do you humans call it? A, a placebo effect? But if it works, it works. And it would be nice to have more peace and quiet around here. Is that another Echo Blossom? The newest witch Amira seems to have gotten very, very close with Perry. I hope Perry is honest and tells Amira what she told me once. As much as Perry enjoys the occasional mortal distraction, she only ever loved Vivian. Like, great-great Aunt Vivian? Wow. Francis, you did so well at the trial. Yes. Well... I'm still not sure what I'm supposed to do with this cursed amulet I made. Give it here. I'll take care of it. Just asking, why didn't everyone in Town Hall freak out when that thing came flying out of Angus? Because only witches can see it. Lo sabia. I was afraid you would say that. You really think I'm a witch? Absolutely. 
You have great potential, Francis. But first, you'll need a wand. Wait, seriously? And then we will initiate you into the coven. Speak with the novice. She was the last to join us. I feel so strange about all of this. I hated lying to Angus about where I was going tonight. But he would hate me if he knew... This... initiation. Will it hurt? Am I going to have to sacrifice animals like my brother did when he became a Santeria priest? No! You just need to read a special incantation in front of the ancient tree in the woods. My grandma gave it to me when it was my turn. And I'll write one for you. Here's the incantation, Francis. Remember to only read it in front of the ancient tree, and when no one from town is looking. Oh, believe me. I don't want anyone to see me having a conversation with a tree. Witch trials are not. You will also need to bring an initiation incantation. Speak to the Farseer to learn more. I have my wand and the incantation, Adept. Then you are ready to be initiated. You will need a sponsor. Usually, it is someone in the Initiate's family, but... Tara, will you sponsor me? Of course, Francis. I would be honored. Thanks. Initiate Francis, take your place in the wheel. Novice, take your place beside him. Initiate, you seek new knowledge, but with it comes a sacred duty. Who brings forth this initiate to join our coven? Uh, I do. As the great wheel turns, so must we take our part. Here where our ancestors stood before us, and where others will follow when we are gone. Enter our circle, for this is the hour. A Fairhaven witch comes into his power. Uh-oh. Is one of those things going to skip again? No. But we must maintain our offerings to keep the wellspring balanced. Welcome, Initiate. We now have enough in our number to turn the season, but we still need to collect an outer stone from the gloaming. Yes! I know what those look like. Let me help. I am the rest of rock and gem expert around here, after all. Very well. The novice will accompany you. Tara, you should prepare and head to the gloaming when you're ready. And you're sure this is safe? What are you going to tell Angus if I get zapped into the center of the earth or something? Nothing, because that won't happen. Promise. I was freaked out using the standing stones at first. But now I'm used to it. If you say so. This is amazing! In high school, we read this Shakespeare play about fairies. I loved that play. I, I used to imagine the world where the fairies lived. They don't live near here, but you're not far off. Fairies... live? Nearby? Whoops. Someone should have told you about that. And I thought I had to deal with too many surprises at once. I know it's a lot to take in, but we have to find the Adderstone. Who? Give me a second to compartmentalize, and I'm right behind you. Shoot! I don't think my wand is strong enough. Sorry, Francis. We'll have to come back another time. I'm not complaining. That gives me more time to adjust to um Everything? I better go see Zephyr. She upgraded my wand last time. I bet she has something in her shop. Why do humans dep her hurts my What was that? I think it was the gloaming reacting to my magic use. We should be fine. I just wonder how many times the gloaming can handle one of us doing something like that. Is that? Yes. Shelby is the most talented farseer I've ever known. But he isn't the only one on this island. Mama had the sight, and she dreamed that Shelby would come to us one day. My abuela could see the future? That gift skipped me. But maybe we'll come to Violet or Bastian in time. Yeah, that hasn't happened. Lena said that the Adderstone would be inside one of these. But which one? My time to shine. Let me take a look. I 
think it's that one. How can you tell? They all look the same. There's a legend about adder stones. They're usually made of a glassy kind of flint. Have you worked with them or something? No, but the strangest people come through jewelry repair shops in the city, and you remember all the odd things they say. Anyway, I could be wrong, but that rock has more specks of flint in it than the other. Let's check it out. I'm certain that's an adder stone, but what about the other thing? That? It's a keystone! I don't know how it got here, but we can use it to travel to other parts of the gloaming. Wait until I get this under my loop. I wish you could, but we'll have to turn it over to Lena straight away. She's the only one who handles the keystones. That's a shame, but if you say so, let's get out of here. As miraculous as it is, my brain is overwhelmed. We did it. We found the Adder Stone, and another Keystone too, which Tara tells me is a big deal. Oh, thank you both from the bottom of my heart. Initiate, you did wonderfully. I'm grateful you chose to stay with us. Look, I still have reservations, but this gloaming place? It's amazing. The Adder Stone isn't all we need to turn the seasons, right? Because I have this sneaking suspicion that it requires more ingredients. That's correct. Could you gather the rest of them? Sure. Everyone else is stretched thin right now. Not as thin as before, but no, the path ahead isn't easy. Now that you've found this keystone, you can enter the next section of the gloaming, which is perfect. You'll need to tap the dragon's blood tree, which can only be found in that area. Tap the tree, place a bucket under the tap, and if you leave it for a few days, the bucket will fill with dragon's blood. That's metal. It's just tree sap, to be clear. This coven does not endorse gathering any actual blood. The herbalist will accompany you as usual. I'll have this done in no time. You two. Always going farther than before. We'll be careful. We like invented careful. So what are we looking for anyway? Dragon's blood, apparently. From the dragon's blood tree? Does that sound familiar to you? Whoa, yeah, it does. I remember my mom telling me something about the first time she saw a dragon's blood tree in the gloaming. I hope she told you positive things because we have to tap that sucker. Yes, I knew we were gonna find another. By now, Antonio's probably noticed I'm gone. I haven't come up with a good excuse yet. He senses my magic. Even if he doesn't understand it. <sighs> he never asks too many questions. But I've been stepping out late at night. A lot more lately. He knows now. That's for sure. Those messages about mom and me in the woods? Wearing our robes and masks? That's how Otto won the election. Did I ever tell you that? My dad had to drop out of the race after someone started blackmailing him about us being witches. We still don't know who sent them. Violet. That's so messed up. Yeah. I try not to think about it. Oh! Did you find another one? Let me see. Bastian is still too young to realize he has the gift. But he does. I can tell. If I don't make it back... Someone has to nurture him. Or those gifts may never show themselves. He's more sensitive than he lets anyone see. Oh! I was worried we found them all. Damon. <laughs> Damon doesn't like to show off, but he's one of the smartest kids on this island. He could go away to college if he wanted, get a degree, join some city coven. But ever since his family moved here, he fit right in, just like a puzzle piece, <laughs> snapping into place. Good morning, Tara. Are you ready for the neighborhood meeting? The what now? Otto made the mandatory. Didn't you hear? He's very authoritative. I've never known a mayor like him in India or England. Oh, I didn't realize they were mandatory now. What kind of suspicion is Otto going to drum up now? 
<clears throat> Greetings, all, and thank you for making my neighborhood meetings a part of your routine. We all know that our community is besieged by forces that want to harm us. <clears throat> like you. And capitalism. Has anyone noticed more sources of harm? I have. Parker! What is Giva doing up there in her observatory? No one knows. Ah! Uh, meteorology! I thought that was abundantly clear. Oh, no. Don't back down, Giver. You got this. Then why do you spend so much time walking around at night? I've seen you in the woods, going into the old mine, standing by the lighthouse ruins. Weather doesn't stop when the sun goes down, Parker. Parker has a point, Miss Joshi. Why were you... Otto, Parker, please, this is too much. For goodness sake. Giva might be higher up on the Mountain of Consciousness than I am. Thank you, Cameron. But Messenger Cameron... I appreciate your input, Messenger. However, every claim deserves an investigation. We will return here in a week to hear the case against Giva Joshi. <laughs> I'm a scientist, not a witch. Is this the 1600s? You're all mad here. The meeting's over, and um, thank you all for attending. I can't believe this. I came here to do research, not to be investigated by some, some power-hungry git. What's going to happen to me? Otto can't do this. We'll find a way to stop the whole thing. I want to believe you, but that hasn't been the case previously. I hate to say it, but you're right. Fairhaven's previous record doesn't give me much hope. Are you ready to go to give us trial? As much as I can be. That's how I feel too. At least Parker isn't possessed by a wraith anymore. Hazel used to say to me, if you have a problem, you can't go around it. You can't go under it. You can't go behind it. You can only go through it. Let's go through it then. Mind if I sit with you? Of course not. May I have everyone's attention? Parker spoke to me earlier. He'd like to take back what he said about Miss Joshi. Give up. I'm sorry. This wasn't my finest moment. Oh, thank goodness you've come to your senses. What is with this town and people changing their minds at crucial times? Not that I'm complaining. So the matter of Miss Joshi is concluded. Does anyone have something to add? Yes, I think it's time to talk about you, Otto. We welcome you into our town, we go to your consciousness center, we fund your soup kitchen, and now this, messenger? Sometimes I lock up the consciousness center fairly late. On more than a few occasions, I've seen Otto sneaking out of the mayor's mansion and into the woods, the very woods he says he distrusts. Oh, that's nonsense. Nah, I've seen him do it too. Dad? I've told you time and time again, you've gone too far. I'm sorry it's come to this. Mayor Soft, you've done more than anyone else in this community to sow discord, whether you meant to or not. I have to agree with Cameron and Bruno. All right, all right. I have been going into the woods, it's true. But it's not what you think. I've been meeting someone. You've been doing what? No, 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 not like that. I just... It was years ago. I was out walking in the woods, and I met this masked woman who said I was meant for great things. She said she'd help me obtain them, but in exchange, I had to help her. And, and then she forced a ring onto my finger. I'm sure she didn't force you. Whenever I needed to do her a favor, the ring would burn. It wouldn't stop until I found her in the woods. How long has this been going on? Um... Well, ten years? <sighs> ten years is a long time to be led astray, Otto. Long enough for you to realize the wrong you were doing. You try making smart decisions when your finger is burning! Angus, Thomas, could you please escort Otto to his house? Well, we all have a lot to think about now. Let's draw this meeting to a close. Whew. I'm so confused. Who was that woman Otto was talking about? A witch, I assume, but not one of us. It couldn't be. I'm sorry, Tara. I have to go try to make things right with Parker. I'll see you at the Circle. Good luck.
We'll find her, Sophia, I promise. Hey, is everything okay? <sighs> Juliet's missing. We had a fight about her curfew last night. And when I called her to breakfast, she wasn't in her room and the window was open. Uh, I don't know if she snuck out this morning or sometime in the middle of the night. This is my fault. I shouldn't have been so hard on her. Okay, where have you looked? I went to Kim's shop first. I thought she may have gone there. We've checked the school and all over town square, but no sign of her yet. She can't have gone far. We should split up. Sophia, search the beach and ask Thomas to help. Kim, you could check the mountain pass and ask Giva if she's seen her. I'll check the forest. Whoever finds her first should bring her back to Sophia's cafe, and we can meet there. Okay. Thanks, Tara. It's good to have a plan. I can't help find my daughter if I'm hysterical. We better get going. See you both soon. Oh, it's freezing out. I better use a scrying spell if I want to find her quickly. Are you all looking for Juliet, too? Sophia came by the shop on the way to Kim's Butcher, but I thought she would likely find her there. And someone's cast an enchantment at the Circle, and it wasn't us. Could it possibly have been Juliet? Her father was in the coven, right? I don't even think she knows she's a witch. Tara thinks she's up there, so we gotta find out what's going on. What on earth? Who would have done this to her? She's just a kid! We must find a way to safely bring her down. If we blast the bubble with our wands, she could get hurt. There's a spell that should work, but we'll need to gather the items quickly. Novice, see if you can find them. Journeyman, Initiate, go find Sophia and Kim and tell them that we've located Juliet. On it. I have the ingredients, High Priestess. Let us gather round her so that we can catch her should she fall too quickly. Dark enchantment I shall break, and Spellbound Child will soon awake. Where's Vanessa? Vanessa? Did she do this to you? She said... She knew my secret, and she would tell my mom if I didn't meet her by the old tree in the woods. But when I got there, she was wearing this weird robe and a mask. She said that you kept her away, but I would help her get in. You're Giacomo's daughter. Our glamour was a spell he wrote. She must have figured out that he was part of the coven. She made me put my hand on the gate, and suddenly this whole place just appeared. Like it had always been here. <sighs> That's the last thing I remember. You're safe now, Juliet. We won't let anyone hurt you. This is just... a lot. Oh, Juliet! Mommy! Are you okay? Uh, what did they do to you? Nothing. It wasn't their fault, Mom. There. Really? Is it coven here? Wait a minute. I was blamed for something you all did? You're the malcontents! No! We're trying to help the town. Really? Mom, can we please just go home? I'll explain it all when we get there. I'll try. Okay. Let's go, baby. <sighs> so now what? Now we have to find Vanessa before she gets herself into serious trouble. <sighs> Will this day never end? Hi, Wesley. Wait. Why are the four of you here together? Wesley has something he needs to tell you. The woman who bound Juliet. I recognized her. I met her several months ago. She came up to me in the woods and said she had a werewolf suppression potion. One that actually worked. But in exchange, she, uh, Vanessa, I suppose we now know, wanted updates on the Coven's activities. And he took it! He took the stinking deal! She reminded me of a figure from stories I heard as a child. A very powerful figure. And so I didn't want to say no. She figured out how to grab you where it hurt. Huh. Somehow she knew what I wanted more than anything. High Priestess, when I first arrived in Ravenwood Hollow, this kind of criminal would have been sentenced to death at the Coven's hands. Perry, no! It is your decision, not ours. What will you do with him? Kill him? Right now? Certainly not. 
While I'm furious with you, Wesley, we don't have time for vengeance. I am grateful. We need to know where Vanessa went when she was here, boy. What does your sniffer tell you? <laughs> I think it's obvious she went this way. And then she went through here. Thank you. I should have known it would be the third pillar. She's no fool. She sealed it shut. Then we need to unseal it. I think I can make that happen. And why should they trust you? Because I'm the one who supplied her parchment. Over time, I got a sense of the techniques she uses. Here, Terra. You have the skills to fix this. Consider these supplies the beginning of my atonement. All you need now is a sunflower. I believe you can grow them in your greenhouse. Go ahead, Terra. The rest of us will stay here in case Vanessa comes back. And we'll be returning to Ravenwood Hollow. We've been away for too long. Come along, Wesley. You've done enough damage to the coven already. I really am sorry. We'll talk about it later. It's done. It's done. The incantation is done. Go on, then. Read it. This icy charm I shall undo, and thaw the stones to let us through. Perfect. Thank you, novice. Now we can proceed. Novice, herbalist, you'll come with me. <laughs> yes! Let's go. The rest of you stay behind in case Vanessa comes back this way. Oh, we'll be ready. I hope this works. What's down this way? We don't know. We passed it before, but the force field seems too strong to break on our own. The three of us together should be able to do it. Let's do it now. Whoa. No wonder you're the High Priestess. Violet, look. I just saw a Dark Wraith, the most powerful one I've ever seen in the gloaming. I can't let it escape into Fairhaven. Gloria? What are you doing in this part of the gloaming all alone? Who's that? It sounded like... Dad? Marcus! I have to cast a glamour over the heart of the Wellspring to protect Violet! Gloria, come back with me right now! I can't! You don't... Marcus, look out! It's right behind you! Ah! Dad! Let go of them! I've got you! Now I bind you, Wraith! No man shall you scathe! Mom! Are you two okay? Dad didn't just suddenly lose his memory. He was attacked by a wraith. And Mom tried to fight it off. She didn't just leave me. She was trying to save Marcus. We've got to keep it together, Violet. Vanessa is still in here somewhere. Juliet could be in gr- Vanessa, stop! I've been forced to siphon paltry bits of magic from the Wellspring for too long. Now I finally found its heart. You're the one who's been causing the imbalance. That's why the wraiths broke free. I had really hoped that the trials would have snared one of you, but the wrong people kept getting accused. Well, it was a useful distraction at least. Vanessa, that's not the heart of the Wellspring. It's something else. You're lying, Lena. Just like your father. He said I could never be part of the Coven. Fine. Now I'll be more powerful than any of you! Mom! See what I did to the last of your coven who tried to prevent me from escaping the gloaming? Now I am bonded with this dark sorceress. So long as this coven stands, you'll never reach the heart of the gloaming, Wraith. As you wish. I know how to destroy you once and for all. And I won't even have to do it myself. Is she? No, she's alive, but she's under a powerful enchantment. Stay and help Violet, Terra. You may be able to wake her with a strong enough potion. Myself and the rest of the coven have to go find Vanessa before she wreaks havoc in the town.
Violet, I'll be back with the potion as soon as I can. Hurry. She still hasn't moved, but I think she's breathing. Here. Nothing's happening. Maybe she just was in here too long. I'm sorry I didn't find you sooner, Mom. I'm sorry, Violet. It's not your fault. I gave up on her long before I ever should have. <coughs> Mom? <gasps> it worked! Mommy, Violet, but... <sighs> it can't be. You're so grown. How long have I been in here? Four years. Oh, baby. And Bastian? He's doing okay. I've been taking care of him. Oh, my poor babies. I'm so sorry. I couldn't let the Wraith travel deeper into the gloaming. Marcus, myself, and Giacomo had already banished it from the island once, but it returned more determined than ever to reach the heart of the Wellspring. And now it has Vanessa. What? Oh, Mom. This is my friend Tara. She's Hazel's granddaughter. Also, it turns out... Vanessa was a witch this whole time. The Wraith is bonded to a witch? This is dire. I should go help the others. Go on ahead of us. I need to help my mom out of here. Be gone, you... you demon! How dare you take the shape of my wife! This is your wife, you idiot! You have to calm yourself, Vanessa. Your malcontent energy is too strong. She's not a malcontent, my dude. She's a witch. Tara, you got here just in time. Natalia, Angus, Parker. You were right. There are witches in town. You just kept accusing the wrong people. I knew it. I knew something weird was happening. <laughs> the person you should put on trial for being a witch is right there. Lena, the head of the coven. That doesn't make any sense. You're also a witch. Wraith. Let Vanessa go! She doesn't want me to let her go. She's finally achieved her goal. Power over a coven that refused to let her in. And just because she wasn't from an established bloodline of witches! I don't know how much longer we can keep this up, Lena. <sighs> you don't need to. The coven will submit to me as the new High Priestess. You have until sundown. What are we gonna do? <laughs> to cast out a genie that powerful, we need more time. Ah, now there's an idea. In this place, I will pause time. The moment that I speak my rhyme. <gasps> That's a dirty trick. But the incantation will wear off eventually. Shelby, the spell only affects this part of Fairhaven, right? If I go get supplies for my farm, time will start moving for me. How am I supposed to make the banishment incantation? You can use the desk in my store. Would that help? I'll run to the bar for supplies. The non-alcoholic kind. Promise. Wesley gave me the parchment, but I still need fennel seed powder and a few of Vanessa's personal items. Amira may have some fennel seed powder in her clinic. And as for the personal items, why don't you try talking to the people Vanessa knows best? In the meantime, we'll keep an eye on Wraithy McRaithface. Come speak to me when you're ready. My wife is a witch. I know, buddy. My wife. Okay, and I can see. Do you have anything on you that's important? Uh, I can take this ring off. I guess this means she doesn't need me any. I'm sure she still cares for you, Otto. But she never told me that she was a witch. A witch! 
Have you got anything of Vanessa's for me to read? Yes. This is a ring Vanessa gave Otto. Well then. Ah. You've been trying to get into the Stone Circle for a long, long time, haven't you? Years and years longer and we realized. There's a man approaching you in the woods. He looks like he is. Otto, but this is the first time seeing him, isn't it? And you slip him the ring as soon as you figure out what kind of person he is. You start courting him, but he doesn't know. He doesn't know you were the masked figure in the woods. Why was she leading a double life this whole time? Because what she wanted and what Otto wanted were the same. Power in Fairhaven. Whoa. Wiley. Vanessa doesn't have the far sight, but stars above. She plans like she does. Well done, novice. This ring holds many echoes of Vanessa. I have these gloves. I got the sense that they're important to her. We'll find out. Hmm. You didn't start out as gloves, did you? You were a sweater. A sweater for a much littler Vanessa. Wow. I didn't think Vanessa was sentimental like that. You put on the sweater because it was cold and you wanted to go back to the place you found while out adventuring. <sighs> the Stone Circle. Barsier? What happened? When she was a girl, she came to Fairhaven one summer. She went out exploring and found the stone circle, but she couldn't get in because she met someone protecting it. Marcus drove her off. She never forgot. She's been trying to break in since she was a kid? Holy. And when she outgrew the sweater she was wearing that day, she unpicked the yarn, had it made into gloves. The gloves sound perfect for the incantation then. You couldn't have found better. There's one more part to all of this, Tara. Something I didn't want to mention in front of the others because... Well, I don't know if I believe this myself. You're making me nervous. To contain Vanessa's Wraith, we need something particularly powerful. Do you know the story about the base of the Molly and Peggy doll statue? There's supposedly something hidden in there, right? Yes, a locket. But you're not sure if it's true? There are plenty of legends about Molly and Peggy. Most of them aren't true. But we need all the help we can get, so I figure before you make the banishment incantation, can you check the statue? Sure. Will I need anything special? A lockpick incantation wouldn't be a bad idea. And if you don't have the ingredients for one, ask around. Time to see if this legend is the real deal. There was a secret. Two could keep it. But now I cast this charm to seek it. Oh, Cheddar Biscuits. There is something in here. I knew it! I knew the legend would turn out to be true! Ready? You see? You never had the power to defeat me, and now you have no power at all. The wellspring is mine. Submit! Never! Get away from my house! And I'm replacing all the flowers you ripped out, you hear me?! Wait, it's acting like... A, a mood ring! No, like the Coven Cauldron! 
Lena, was this fountain possibly built on top of... A font to the wellspring, of course! And Vanessa must have figured it out. And that's why she manipulated Otto into running for mayor. <laughs> he was a useful fool. But we don't need him anymore. Oh, uh, well that's just mean. We need more offerings. Tara, read the incantation. Right! Too long in this place, you have been a bane. Now in this locket, be forever chained! That's all you've got? It's still not enough! Don't give up! Um, who are those people? Tara, get the locket, now! Capture it, Tara! That thing took my mom from me! We can't let it hurt anyone else! I'm ready! Vanessa, darling, are you all right? Are you there? Schnooker, you were really a witch this whole time? You've been lying to me? Welcome to the club. Messenger Cameron, what do we do? They're all malcontents. I, I have no idea. We can't banish all of them, can we? Just one. Once that fairy is fixed, Vanessa is never setting foot on this island ever again. I won't have her near my child or any of the island's other children. Agreed. Oh, Sophia, I'm so sorry. I was never going to hurt Juliet. I just needed to borrow her ability. I don't want to hear it. And it's her you need to apologize to. I'm sorry, Juliet. I betrayed your trust. But so did they. They've been lying to all of you for years just so they could hoard the power of the Wellspring for themselves. Liar! We've protected it, and protected the whole island, at a cost you don't understand! Really? Enlighten me. Gloria? It can't be. Mommy? Oh, Bastian! Who is she? And who's the... 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 Fairy and the guy with the backwards feet. None of this was in my farmer's manual. What on earth is going on? We've lived here longer than you, mortal. But now our task is done. You won't see us again. They just disappeared. Everyone saw that, right? Everyone just settled down. We're still the same people we've always been. Still your friends and neighbors. And right now, another storm's coming. But what do we do about you malcontents? I mean, witches. I don't know. Throw us a pizza party for, like, saving you? We would never have been in danger if you hadn't lied to us this whole time, Lena. Lena's no more dangerous today than she was yesterday. And Shelby is right. You best get home before it really starts to come down. Come along to Town Hall, Mr. and Mrs. Soft. You can't take me into custody! I'm the mayor! Not for long. We need to return to the wheel. This town can't make it through many more blizzards. You have brought the incantation with you, yes? I have. What was the object you needed to bring? Um, Alina, this day has already taken a dark enough turn, don't you think? The blade symbolizes the fire of the reborn sun. Read the incantation, novice. We turn the circle, together as one, and welcome the birth of the new spring sun. Farewell, embers of the waning year. Tonight, a new year dawns. Blessed be the light that unites us all. We say goodbye to the cold sun of winter. And welcome the warmth of spring. I 
am exhausted. I want to stay and celebrate, but I think I just want to go home and rest. You've certainly earned it. Do you think this will actually change anything? Now that the town knows our secret. I don't know. I hope so.